All right, folks, and we are back with our open bracket tournament this time around. Uh, again, the beginner's bracket, again, in quotation mark beginners. Uh, I think I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of uh, rebranding for that one because those beginners play a little bit too well for my liking, to be honest. But we got the open here, so we've got everyone. Uh, everyone is here, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate style. And we're starting with uh, Overkicks and Quirk here. So we've got a Uel Vasaraga matchup. Vasaraga, of course, a... Uh, you know, pretty underrepresented character, I would say, yeah, for, for somewhat good reason. I think this character could use a little bit of, a little bit of love uh, from uh, from good old Arxis, Daddy Arxis there when April 2nd rolls around, we'll have to see. Uh, but it's an interesting matchup. Again, I feel like this is probably, I have to imagine, it's okay. Vasaraga, when he doesn't have his armor up, Vasaraga is basically like, in my opinion, at least, like most of the time, unless it's Fuselet piloting him, because Fuselet is just built different, Vasaraga is like not a character. You know what I'm talking about? Like, he, he when he doesn't have Soul Forge, I feel like he isn't a character. And I feel like UL is a character that is just, they have such overwhelming offense, right? Or not not, not overwhelming, but just like, it's so hard to find, like, a gap to hit a button, right? And uh, with Vasraga having some incredibly slow normals and just terrible defense in general, I have to imagine that this uh, could be the, could be difficult for him, right? Could be difficult. I mean, maybe he can try and keep uh, UL out there in mid-range with his big old scythe and his projectiles and things like that. But of course, uh, if you can't, if you don't hit UL with lows, right, her stance just blows you up. Oh, oh wait, that's, actually, that's a good point too. Vasaraga's fastest low is seven, is nine frames, right, on his 2M. I think he's gonna have a really, really hard time dealing with uh, the UL stance on defense too. Yeah, I, I can't imagine this uh, being very good for Vasaraga. Well, as, as I say this though, uh, Kicks here takes the first round on the UL, but Quirk now getting a much better showing in the second one. Oh, this actually, oh, I was gonna say that could actually have been, uh, I'm not, I know Vasaraga can get some pretty nasty starters off of that 2M if it connects, so that maybe could have been death, but doesn't matter. Regardless, uh, doesn't get the full conversion there, but the overall corner pressure and everything, even with a couple of whiff throws and whatnot, Quirk still finds themselves uh, firmly in control of that round. Let's see who takes the first game here. Again, it's first to two, all, all the way up until we get to top eight, right? So, uh, in a game like this, first to two goes real fast. All right, command grab. It is scary in the corner here sometimes with Vasaraga, if you respect him too much, you can guard break into full combos. Or, if your name is uh, Kix here on the UL, you can just jump straight into him, even with his Soul Forge up, and uh, blow his ass up, taking corner to corner. Not so bad. Ultimate DP there. That is Vasaraga's only true reversal. And it's kind of nice in the in the way that it's, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta jump it. You know, most people with DPs, they're more used to having to block it or spot dodge it or something like that. Can't do that with him. Getting uh, eaten up by the throw mix right here. Brave counter, get off me. DP, UL having a meterless DP, flexing that shit on Vasaraga, but this is gonna be damage. Raging Strike conversion here. I think this might be death. It's hard to say. No, no, not quite. Okay, maybe if they had, maybe if they had more meter for another ultimate skill there or another Raging Strike conversion, but uh, Kick's gonna barely make it out of, of there with their life, and the cross up jump in there is going to reduce Quirk to Atoms with Kick's taking that first round. Okay, pretty, pretty close sets actually so far. Let's see. Obviously, uh, if anyone who loses this is still, you know, you're still alive. Uh, you want to, uh, but you don't want to head down to losers bracket where suddenly you're fighting with your life on the line. So we'll have to see. Quirk definitely gonna want to uh, clean things up here a little bit and try and figure out over kicks his offense. Okay, this isn't so bad. Yeah, but again, that's what I'm This stance right here, like that, what, what just happened right there, I feel like is going to be a massive problem for Vasaraga in this matchup. UL stance, if you're unfamiliar, uh, auto counters all mids, like all mids, like like DPs and skybound darts, all mids. You know what I'm talking about? But it loses to lows, loses to overheads, and it loses to projectiles. Overheads, I mean, there's really nobody has any quick overheads outside of maybe like, you know, fairy or some characters like that, but even still, not super fast. And then lows, Vasaraga's quickest low is, is nine frames, I'm pretty sure, on 2M, right? So. That stance, I gotta, I gotta imagine, causes a lot of trouble for Vasaraga here. Uh, how long should we wait for someone? Um, I think I think uh, 15 minutes is, is a pretty good one. If they're not here in, in 15 minutes, then we send to the loser's bracket. If they're not here 10 minutes after that, then they get DQ'd, you know? Uh, maybe even five minutes if they, after they get sent down to the loser's bracket, but we'll see. If we don't hear from them at the very least, we'll see. Yeah, if, if they, if they like, if, if we ping them 15 minutes in and they go, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm almost there, then okay, that's fine. But anyways, back to the match here. Oh, command grab going to, yeah, so you well obviously airborne there when she has her little backflips. So command grab not going to work out. This is Vasaraga's other pseudo reversal, right? Is that ultimate dash. It, the armor starts on frame six, so it's not a perfect reversal, but you can uh, mash out a lot of people's gaps with it and blow them up for it. However, only person getting blown up right now looks like it might be Quirk. You well can do some pretty big damage with these ultimate skills, but Vasaraga, of course, rocking the highest HP in the game, manages to weather the storm there. All right, hold on. It could be, uh, yeah, got the, got the Soul Forge back up. That is kind of the name of the game with Vasaraga, right? Is just get knockdowns, re-up your Soul Forge. Because with Soul Forge, you can actually be a real character. Oh my god, and that overhead was so clever. Is he going to give him the game? It is. That overhead was so smart. Because they're, they're uh, well, first off, it's an overhead, right? So it's, it's, it's unexpected. People might be crouch blocking by default. But then especially if they were expecting a throw there and trying to bait it, in that overhead, Vasaraga goes airborne. Right, so they, they they sail clean over the throw there, get the punish, and incredibly tight stuff by Quirk there to be, especially in such a, a spooky situation where if they lose that round, they get they're sent down to losers. They come up with such a game plan on the fly, pretty good. Okay, but unfortunately, this next round's not starting off so good for them. Okay, ultimate uh, DP there again. 
Gets them out of that situation, not so bad. Doesn't have Soul Forge up, though, which again is, is a very spooky position to be if your name is Basaraga. All right, hold on. Oh, but doesn't quite get the conversion off the 2M. Counter hit 6XL. I often say that Boss Raga doesn't have a 6XL because it's just like such a bad button and he gets so little off it. But I suppose off of counter hit, he does get some conversions. Armor's right through. Kicks his uh, shenaniganry there. Trying to uh, do the, the slide in there. Oh, baby. All right. This is happening now. They're alive, but you know, it's uh, it's painful for sure. And no, almost no brave points at this point. Doesn't get hit by the cross-up jump in that killed him at the end of the last game. Brave points get off of me. Oh my god, this might be death. I don't know what the boss rocket combo route is here, and it is. God damn. Okay. Well converted by Quirk. God damn. Well done. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about with that U. Uh, so, obviously, boss rocket's U dash there, the, the ultimate armored tackle, is not a real reversal in the sense that it doesn't, the armor doesn't start up on frame one. Uh, but when he does hit it, it is incredibly high reward. It gives him uh, some real big nasty combos, as we just saw, to uh, great effect there from Quirk. So, now it's 1-1. One, one. It was actually, it wasn't looking so good for Quirk there, but they pulled it together. And now it's anybody's game. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Boss Rock does have a very quick anti-air option. Out of stance with the light there. You want to play against Boss first round? You might have to. Quark looking kind of strong right now. Goddamn. The U steppers there. All right, projectile. Get away from me. Get swept in. Again, this this is... Oh, okay, I was going to say, this is where UL might be able to cash some uh, some checks here. But again, very strong use of that ultimate DP by Quark to keep kicks sort of not uh, guessing on their own offense, as it were. Okay, Brave counter, get off me. Blocks it. That is plus, but actually waits a little bit too long to actually convert off it into anything there. But Quirk, once again, some really good mental resilience here early on. It's, you know, reverse 2 owing somebody is not as hard as reverse 3 owing somebody, but they might, they're on the, firmly on the path. After what looked like it was going to be a pretty tough start for them here. So let's see. Kicks are going to have to figure something out now. Good start to the round for them. Oh my god, double whiff throw. Uh, both uh, both people thought they were in throw range there, so Quirk attempts to detect. Kicks attempts to throw, and they both miss. Kicks are going to have to figure something out here real soon. Again, the more time you give Boss Raga to set up there and uh, get Soul Forge, things get bad for you. Okay, but that overhead kick does lead to a full combo on counter hit. Gets them to the corner there. Oh, gets anti-aired there, or aired to aired rather, though, by Quirk. And now, big ol' ultimate skill. Good combo. It's a pretty good mid-screen damage, I suppose, all things considered. Yeah, he is so big, right, Boss Raga, that sometimes it's like uh, you think he's there when he's not actually. Yo, this is, this is not so bad for kicks here. I mean, this is, uh, I don't think, going to be death. Yeah, it's not. I mean, no brave points. It's going to be big damage, but I believe uh, Quirk will still be alive here. That's fine. Yeah, but they uh, are now officially strike will kill, throw will kill, anything will kill, basically. And exa what? That's a combo? Interesting. That wasn't even a counter hit, was it? That was just a straight up two chain off of that little kick there. Interesting. That's uh, some nice sauce that UL's rocking there. Kicks tying it up here one to one, and now we are officially one way or another on uh, another onset point. One of these players is going down to lose bracket, so let's see what's going to be. Good start to the round for Kicks has been the case most of the time. They found themselves with the, cor the corner pressure early on, but uh, Quark's been able to fight out of it usually. Uh, accidentally back throws Quark out of the corner there. You can't imagine that's what Kicks wanted to do, but at the same time, Quark missing their sort of conversion off of Brekka there. Not getting what they wanted. However, ultimate dash is going to be UL's little backflip. Finding themselves in mid-screen now. Runs up and DPs. What the kind of walk-up slowly and down smash shenaniganry is this? It worked out, though. Now Kicks finding themselves with a health advantage, a ray point advantage, a meter advantage. They got basically everything they could ever desire in this round, except for their toes, which have just been destroyed by Quirk. Taking them right out from them with that 2M there. But again, no brave points, no meter. Next touch will almost certainly kill. Oh, well, not, not from Quirk, though. But uh, more so from Kicks because of this no brave point stuff that's happening right now. And a raging strike! Drive Impact, you just got hooked by Drive Impact, unfortunately. It's always something you gotta watch out for. It's always something you gotta watch out for, right? It's it, Yes, it's technically fully reactable, right? It's, it's 29 frames and spot dodge is, is, is set up perfectly to destroy it, but unfortunately, when everything else is uh, is, is on the line there, it can be hard, so. Uh, oh, you, you, you spam Dream Match? That's okay, that's okay. Yeah, so that's gonna be that's gonna be Kicks moving on here. And uh, well done to both players. Quirk, of course, still in this and played very strong on that Vassaraga, but they gotta make a little bit of a loser's run right now. So we'll see. All right, and we are here with our next match on winner's side. And we got quite the brawl upcoming here. We got Gabagool on the Ladiva, and we've got Piantoki on the Armaya. We got Masters players uh, matched up here. Gabba's a very strong Ladiva. He, he didn't manage to make it to the uh, the last uh, brawl there because he was off playing in a, an offline uh, tournament, I believe. But now here he is. So let's see how Toki deals with this. Armaya Ladiva is an interesting one, right? I feel like Narmaya, it, it, it kind of feels like it works out for me a lot of the time. As uh, I, I say this oftentimes in the videos where Narmaya is one of the characters that I really haven't learned a whole bunch against, but it just kind of feels like it works. Right, her having a parry definitely in her, uh, yeah, in this offensive stance here is definitely something that Ladiva can exploit a little bit too. Oh, but Gabba is going to get throw baited by that jump view there. It is a, it is a scary little thing that Narmaya can do there, and it's going to lead into a nice meaty combo here from Toki. Ladiva got a lot of health, but that is still some really good damage coming out of Narmaya there. Let's see. Ooh. A little bit of a staring contest there that Gabba does end up winning. 
Gabba loves his Ladiva Optimals, so let's see how he goes from here. Oh, and again, the jump U leading to a bit of a strange situation there, and Gabba getting the worst of it. Gets his Brave counter baited once more, and Toki off to a very strong start here, incredibly uh, good stuff here. Getting Gabba to uh, get, get, get Gabba to jump a little bit here. I'm not blazing. I'm not blazing. I'm, 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 obviously, I'm biased. I love me some Ladivas, right? But at the end of the day, Toki right now is playing very well. If anything, Gabba's playing a little jumpy on defense, if I'm being completely honest with you. He's getting, uh, he's getting, he's getting kind of uh, baited a whole lot here. As I say this, though, Toki with an unfortunate DP there. Doesn't quite work out for them. Okay. Good old ultimate restance there. Let's Narmaya extend her combo quite a bit, even in mid-screen, as long as she's going to spend 50 meter. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool-looking combo. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Brave counter. Get off me, says Gabba. Let's see. Oh, my God, and the shimmy. Really good stuff by Toki there, right? Does a little walk back there. Gabba hits a button and uh, just gets absolutely eviscerated for the trouble. Incredibly well played offense so far by oh what the hell! Incredibly well played offense by Toki so far, right? Uh, really catching out Gabba being a little bit jumpy here, but that uh, that ultimate that time that Gabba did not fall for the ultimate flip. Grabs it right out of the air there, but raging strike once again. We were talking about it. No matter how good you are, man, you gotta be ready for raging strike, right? Doesn't matter if you're S rank or A rank or master or a tournament player, right? Raging strike is one of those things. If you do not give it the the proper amount of room in your mental stack, you will get blown up for it, especially when you only have one brave point like Gabba did right there. So Toki. Taking that first game in pretty, uh, pretty, pretty dominant fashion, I would say. Found that, you know, again, their offense has just been working really well against Gabba here so far. Let's see if Gabba can adapt and clean it up a little bit. Spot dodge there. Oh, into the back throw. Fair enough. Tries to bait a Brave counter there. Doesn't quite work out. Gets hit with another Raging Strike. And now Gabba finding themselves out of Brave points. Token in a pretty good position here. However, this is something that Gabba does like doing for sure. They do, they do love them some air command grab. And uh, that ultimate flip that was working out really well for Token in the last game has now uh, twice in a row been countered in a pretty spectacular fashion by Gabba here. Ooh, but doesn't quite get the actual conversion they were looking for off of that spot dodge rating strike. And Toki putting themselves on set point here, trying to send Gabba down to loser's bracket. I'm sure loser's bracket will not be very happy about that, but Toki will uh, do it just fine. Let's see. I gotta figure something out here. Oh, nice. Doesn't fall for the cross up there. I like the idea from Toki, right? Uh, again, Gabba has been a little bit uh, jumpy on defense. They've tried to condition them to not be. So maybe they're trying to get them to uh, sit still a little bit there and go for the cross up, but did not quite work out. And now this is the problem. You're in the Ladiva Blender. This is where you don't want to be. Gabba did not realize that 5H was going to connect. That's why they spot dodged that. Probably trying to bait out a brave counter of some kind. Gets the counter hits. Doesn't get the full conversion. That doesn't have headbutts. Had to do, oh my god, had to do uh, some sort of Raging Strike conversion. But once again, 6 2 3 U right out of there. Uh, anti air grabs the. The little uh, air flip there, the U flip by Narmaya, and puts themselves tied up one to one here. I'm trying to stay alive on, in winner side of the bracket. Let's see. That was a bold clothesline, but it worked out. No, I, yeah, uh, Narm's U teleport is definitely. I mean, it, it, it works as a throw bait, right? But as an offensive tool, it is definitely. I mean, you can you can 100% of the time, not even uh, six two three U. Uh, Gabba could even be five Ling that, like basically every single time, getting a full combo into something. Oh, okay, and that's an interesting anti air conversion there, but he does get the anti air at least. Three headbutts, he gets the hard knockdown. Oh, but Toki. Guessing correctly on the command grab there. Trying to get uh, Gabba either trying to reset them there or wasn't sure that 5L was going to connect. Brave counter, get off me. Finds themselves in the corner. EX flip there is plus on block. Some serious stagger pressure happening from Tokyo right now, but Gabba is just playing patient, taking all of that. Let's see. Is it going to bite him in the ass? And so far, it looks like it is. He can only block for so long, but the ultimate equalizer is Ladiva Super Skybound Dart, unfortunately. You, be, you spend the entire round winning, and then she just uh, puts you in that big old bear hug. And suddenly, the referee counts to three, and you are going to sleep. God damn. That's unfortunate. Yeah, dropped a little bit of a drop there by Toki into the immediate uh, SSBA in response by Gabba. Tying it up one-to-one. -one. Let's see. Toki's still looking very strong here, but... You can see uh, Gabba adapting some of the options a little bit more as the set goes on, right? The ultimate flip. Uh, and there was something else that I forget too, but I, I can't for, I can't for life me remember. But yeah, the ultimate flip at the very least was one of the things that he has been punishing a lot more recently. And now finds uh, Toki finding themselves earlier in the uh, in the corner. Yeah, it can be a very big mental killer, right? To drop to, like be getting hit with the Diva Sky uh, Super Sky Bond Art at, in any in the best of times is already usually not. Oh, I did not. You know what? I just learned a conversion off of uh, off of that right there. Interesting. But yes, get. Oh my God, getting hit with the Diva Super Sky Bond Art at any time can be enough of a mental killer. Uh, but especially off of a drop combo where you really could have put yourself in a position to win the round is uh, tough. But Toki's gonna have to get their mental together here and not let it get to them. But the last game behind them, because Gabba's now, once again, uh, now they're the one on set points. So let's see. DP getting baited, unfortunately. They had the kill there for sure. Yeah, so that's even that's even harder. But again, you gotta, you gotta not let it get to you if you can. Their DPs have not been working out too well so far. Oh my god, I was gonna say, but finds themselves in an advantageous corner position. But now, back thrown into the corner by Gabba. Oh, back throw right back. They're trading them back and forth here. Brave counter, get off of me. 
Doesn't manage to get the 6-2-3-U there. Libas, uh, that is not a, a wonderful anti-air for Ladiva. Sometimes it does fail her. As you can see right there, what happened with Gabagool. Oh, but the 2M is going to clip the toes there into this full conversion. I don't think they're dead. Maybe they... Oh, my God. I said maybe they could have been if there was a far M into an air grab there or something. But Gabba going to bring that all the way back from uh, Toki taking it all the way to set points. And it's going to end up winning 2-1 there over Pion Toki. Well played to both of our players. But Gabba sort of adapting to his opponent's options a little bit better there as the set went on. All right, we got our, our next match of uh, winner's side here. We got Council on the Cagliostro versus Archer on the Seahawks. Council, of course, very strong Cagliostro. Again, I, I was talking about this uh, right before I turned the camera on, but they just got done beating my ass in rank that they were prepping here, so we'll see. Uh, Archer, very, very strong on the Seahawks, did win. Yeah, exactly. It's complete same matchup, exactly. Fighting Ladiva, fighting Seahawks, the same thing. Archer did win our beginner bracket uh, yesterday. Now they're trying to, uh, you know, prove their worth here in the open bracket. Got a, got a big mountain to climb here in terms of a bunch of Masters players standing in their way, but I believe they were playing they were playing very strong yesterday, so if they keep that up, they can at least uh, put up a good fight here. And uh, so far, it's not so bad, right? But of course, finding yourself in the corner against Cagliostro early on here is not necessarily the best. That parry, though, gonna give them some more room to breathe. Oh my god! And just snipes her right out of the teleport there. I didn't even know that was a thing. What the hell? I guess, yeah, she, she doesn't have a... She has some invincibility on the teleport, but it doesn't start right away. Or, like, some of the teleports aren't invincible at all. I can't remember, actually. They were not invincibility, but she's just, like, not there, I suppose, to take the hitbox. In any case, Archer, uh, off of that interaction with the teleport there, pushing Council to the corner and uh, taking that first round. Incredibly strong stuff. Let's see if you can keep it up. Uh, oh, round starts. Backboard there. Gets jumped by Council into a throw. Council finding themselves with the first pressure of the round here. Throws back to back. Gets the counter hit on Wake Up there, the meaty. Throw, throw, strike, baby. This is, uh, we, we, we fighting games now. It's gonna be a full combo. Yeah, unfortunately. Cagliostro, one of the, uh, oh, right, maybe, maybe they couldn't have converted more off of that, actually. Uh, I, I can't say for sure, but Cagliostro is one of the rare few who can combo off of her throws if she gets into the right situation. And you trap. Gonna stop Archer dead in his tracks there. Trying to, uh, sort of skip neutral there. And then you trap is a big, gigantic stop sign there, just in the middle of the whole thing. To blow him up. You activated my trap card. Damn right. Oh, this is, yeah, this is where it gets scary. Again. Guy gets some momentum, she gets set up, she's got the traps, and suddenly every hit you take can lead to really big damage to throw, it's an overhead, anything. Right. But, Archer, once again, fighting his way out of the corner successfully. Very strong uh, wherewithal there to not just get blown up and overwhelmed on defense. I know it happens to me against Cagliostro so quite often, but that cross-up teleport, man. Tricky little tool. And uh, unfortunately, whatever Archer did try to do there did not quite work out to beat it. Back throw incident, though. Hold on. There's a world. If he gets one good hit here, actually, Seahawks does have some pretty long combos, depending on the starter. Maybe not going to kill, but we can get pretty close. Actually, at this point, maybe he would with Skybound, but I don't think we'll get to see that future after all. As Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Council not able to get the full kill here, but we're in chip distance now. This is bad. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, just gets cross-up teleported there. And uh, I mean, that was just a horrible situation, right? Being in uh, being in chip distance range like that against any kind of zoner or anyone who can hit you with a special from full screen, basically, is, is, a, is a horrible place to be. Uh, but Archer is still doing uh, doing very well in that game, holding his own in, in, in a big way. Uh, Council definitely going to be trying to clean this up here and take it over, uh, take it home 2-0, but we'll see. Counter hit 6-6-L. That's going to be a wall bounce combo there, too. This is not a good start if your name is Archer on the Seahawks here, but we'll have to see. Good stagger pressure here. Just some, uh, some close Ls, some plus frames. Council definitely is a fan of uh, doing that uh, EX, I'm going to call it the EX hip thrust there, that uh, Cagliostro does enjoy doing, right? Uh, so I, I will have to, we'll have to see, because a lot of times I find he does that even in block strings, where it can potentially be punishable, but maybe it's like a hard call out uh, to some kind of mashing or something by his opponent, perhaps. Oh, inst Seahawks install, what in God's name? Okay, this is uh, Archer, the only time I've ever seen this move used. Hip thrust is a dangerous way to say that, yeah, perhaps. The only time I've ever seen this move used uh, was by Archer, and uh, yeah, it was always twice, so this is the second time. Unfortunately, no one uses that, that move for a reason. The Seahawks install is kind of stinky. It gives them a lot more plus frames than everything. That's kind of what the character does anyway, so... Uh, I like I like the idea there, but uh, unfortunately... Just call it Dragon? I'll call it Hip Thrust. It's fine. It's fine, guys. Don't worry about it. She's like a thousand years old or something. It's not inappropriate. Back throw incident, once again. They can counter to the corner here. Let's see how they get out of it. Alright. DX projectile coming out from Seahawks there. This kind of walks uh, walks right in there. Maybe maybe expecting uh, Archer to be a little bit passive and get thrown or something, but just gets bonked right on the head for their trouble there. Skybound art. Gonna be good damage here. Good brave point uh, advantage now coming on uh, coming in for Archer as well. No meterless DP on Cag. Keep in mind. So until he gets a 50 meter, if he also wants to brave counter and potentially risk getting baited like that, Council's gonna have to hold all this or a back throw incident of their own can help them out, and that is going to be that parry's not gonna work very well. Not death by, by any means, but. Okay, well, there's this taking turns back throwing each other into the corner, apparently. And Archer going to find a nice hit there. Clips Council right in the toes. You gotta watch out for those toes, man. Lows, they're, uh, they're nice and quick. So if you're not blocking low by default, it's very easy to catch you out there and get you uh, blown up. So Archer now trying to stay alive in here. If he takes this, it'll be 1-1. One, one. 
Right? Again, he's, uh, he's playing very well so far, honestly. He's, he's a quite the powerful player he's up against, and he is definitely not just rolling over and folding like some kind of fish. Okay. Gets the record combo there. Unfortunately, gets clipped on his way in into the Raging Strike conversion. Council. Oh, yeah, and of course, side switch combos. caviosto has got that kind of sauce. Overhead, gonna be a full combo now because of the trap, too. So I'm talking about when Kavioso has those traps on screen, she's much scarier. Suddenly, every every little hit you take could potentially lead to some pretty big damage. All right. Oh, and spot dodges. You know, that was actually really good, too. A lot of the times with that Seahawks backboard, if you spot dodge it too late or too early, because Sylvia's turn pulled the trap there, it was nice and easy to just guarantee Council a hit or at least a turn there. And that's going to be them sealing it 2-0 over Archer. But both, well, well played to both players. Again, Council is uh, quite the demon. So Archer did a very good job to be holding up as well as they did. You are great to both players there, and we will be moving on. All right, and here is our next match. I believe this is for, I think this is for top eight qualification on winner's side here. So we've got Blast Hammer and uh, Besu here. Besu on the 2B, Blast Hammer on the Uno. I have talked to Blast Hammer a bit, and I do know that he happens to hate, absolutely hate this matchup for Honoring. Uh, it, is his, uh, it is his opinion, and I understand what he means, too, that this is a very bad matchup for uh, Andre, Uno, whatever you... I'm going to call him Andre, because this feels more normal to me. Uh, but he seems to... You know, he's got his Ada in his pocket that he likes to pull out for this kind of stuff, but it seems that for right now, he's like, you know what, I'm sticking with my boy. I'm believing in my main. I want him to carry me through this, so we'll have to see. Tubi, of course, one of the big reasons. She has that... Uh, she has such crazy neutral control there with just her massive sword normals and everything, right? Makes it kind of hard for Andre to kind of play his video game there. But so far, I mean, it's not going super bad for Blast, right? He's, he's got some corner pressure going here. Pretty, pretty decent start to this first round. Again, 2B, no... Oh, I'm going to say 2B, no meterless reversal. Right, so with, with her being at 39% meter like there, uh, Blast could run some pretty nice offense, but it seems he was uh, trying to bait out something. And he gets uh, pushed out of the corner for his trouble, but still, going to have to be able to uh, figure out how to close that round regardless. And he's up 1-0. Bad matchups be damned. Let's see. Okay. Just tossing out some projectiles there. I mean, it's, it's all, yeah, I was gonna, it, it's all it's all good until 2B starts throwing out some of her, uh, you know, that laser, that, uh, the chain, right? Uh, any any sort of her gigantic sword normals there or going airborne or anything like that, right? Suddenly things can get pretty hard for Honor, so we'll have to see. Oh, and gets counter hits, big, meaty counter hit directly out of the follow-up of his parry there. Unfortunate. Those parry follow-ups on Honre do always go off, so it is something you can always uh, try to, to blow them up for if you are able to, if you, if in, if you got the position for it, as it were. Okay, and so yeah, this, this round not going, oh, okay, but drops the combo with the hammer there. Not sure if that would combo or if that was just the accidental, uh, of the wrong special used. We'll have to see. This is, oh, I was going to say, it's kind of where Blast wants to keep it here with, at that distance, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's at one touch range, basically, of anything that, uh, that 2B does. So he's going to want to keep it at this range, kind of see how tries Spear Thrust it out. This is his best bet, for sure. That's some pretty nasty chip damage coming out of that ultimate Spear Spin there. It's not looking, so, this is winnable, for sure, but again, very dangerous. Yeah, 2B can also cover a lot of space really fast with her dash there. You gotta be very careful to not commit to something too punishable too quickly, but hold on. Actually zoning out 2B, but oh wow, Fearless goes in there, and Chip can be very nasty against Andre. He's got a lot of moves that are basically almost impossible to spot dodge or beat on Chip. Let's see. One of that ultimate spear spin from earlier was one we can talk about, or he'll just use the EX spear thrust to finish it out there. I mean, that is very good uh, composure from Basu there to stay alive that long in that Chip situation, but that's just... You know, we we're talking about with Cagliostro, but when you're in chip against any of these characters who can't you with a special from full screen, basically, like Andre, like Cag, like, I mean, there's a bunch of them, but it can get really difficult. So, Blast able to pull that out. Let's see, is this a character switch from Besu, perhaps? Yes, very good job slowing down the pace of the game there at the very end, right? That's what I was saying. He wants, he wants to keep that at that full screen kind of distance and not let Besu uh, feel comfortable running up and just blowing him for it. We're blowing him up for it. Oops, pause, as it were. Uh, what are we doing here? Is this, a, is this a character switch? It is. Basu swapping over to an Armaya. What's the score right now? It is, uh, pause, yes. It is 104 Blast taking care of Basu's 2B here. And Basu said, you know what? How about an Armaya instead? Armaya. Interesting. Okay, okay, let's see. I'll be interested to see uh, how, how this plays out differently for Basu here. Maybe, they, maybe they're more comfortable with an Armaya than 2B. I think on paper... I would imagine this is a better matchup for uh, Andre, actually, but Blast, you know, was able to handle the 2B, so maybe Beja just wants to switch it up a little bit here. All right, well, good start. Good, very, very good start. Has the April 2nd meeting, yes. Very good start to uh, the round here for Blast. Doesn't get, uh, doesn't get baited there. Attempted break counter bait's not going to work out. Oh, and the U-Flip is going to actually take long enough that the parry will be out of active frames by the time that, uh, that, he, that they actually connect. And get a full combo off of there on blast but once again this is yeah i was gonna say you're, you find yourself in that same spot there 
Andre, uh, he's he's not a full zoner necessarily. He does have a lot of up close stuff, and he's not like he's not gonna be able to out zone like Matero or something necessarily. He can anti zone them a little bit, but still, if you're if you're an Armaya, he can keep you out of distance pretty uh, pretty comfortably and not really be too scared about that. Brave counter, get off me, spear thrust. Oh, and that DP is unfortunate. I understand the idea. I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna say that Blast is kind of just walking them down to the corner. So basically, wanted out of that. Oh, and this is bad too. That uh, little jump dive kick there that Andre has access to gives him quite the meaty combo on hit. If you do get blown up by it here, with exactly what happened to base. He's alive, obviously, but this round is now looking very scary. And Blast, this is still first to two. We're not in top eight yet, so if Blast wins this, that will be the end of this set. That'll be basically moving on to loser's side of the bracket, and that's exactly what is going to happen there. Just very solid play from Blast the entire time, staying on the, start, on the, on the side of the screen that this character wants to be, right? He was able to control the place, the pace of the match, basically the entire time, whether it was the 2B or the uh, or the Narmaya. And that, that pace control did manage to get him to set there. So, well played to both of our players. But that's going to be Beisu moving on to loser's side. And Blast, I believe, qualifying for top 8 now. All right, and now we are on the loser side of the bracket here. We have our top 8 for winners uh, basically figured out. Uh, I believe it is Hostile and Blast on the one side, and then Gabagool and Council on the other side. So now we're, we're going through losers here to figure out what our loser's top 8 is going to be. And uh, right now, we've got Quirk versus Beisu, right? Basically, we just saw them uh, with an unfortunate uh, bit of a loss against ooh, against Blast Hammer there. They played well, right? Now they're coming down here to fight another master rank player of another relatively rare character in Quirk's Vasaraga here. So let's see how they can do. This has uh, been matchup check the tournament bracket for them so far. So let's see. Brave counter, get off me. Gets their toes clipped there by Vasaraga's 2M. Does manage to parry their way out of the corner. Oh, but their cross-up dash there going to get brutally murdered by Vasaraga's... Uh, charged ultimate dash there. Doesn't get, doesn't get the you know, deaths off of it, but it is a pretty meaty amount of damage. They just ate there. Blocks the ultimate flip. Doesn't get, doesn't punish it necessarily. I'm not sure if Boss Rock, Boss Rock's normals are awfully slow. I'm not even sure if he can. Oh, this might be death? No, just barely surviving. Okay. And meaty. I think they just hit them out of another flip there. You see, you heard the noise there. You saw the meter expenditure from Beisu. So that might have been, uh, that was some ultimate move they were trying to do, and they just got bombed for the trouble there. Meaty. On, uh, oh, the CD, I didn't catch which one went on cooldown. So it must have been, a, I, I, guess it's, I guess it was Flip then, if, the, if that was the one that went on cooldown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Soul Forge there. Oh, yeah, that is uh, that is plus on block if, if Valsaraga spaces it out, those battalions. But usually it's 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 a very, very gigantic range of what the frame advantage could be. It can be from like minus a billion to like plus seven. So I guess uh, with his nine frame medium there, basically able to snipe him out. But here we go, once again. Oh, bit of a bit of a drop combo, I have to imagine, from Quirk there. Finding themselves with no brave points now. This is dangerous. Vasaraga's a big tanky boy, but yeah, I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna say exactly that starter could probably just kill straight up with no brave points, but basically unable to get the full conversion. Still doing fine, still got a, still got an advantage in, in brave points and meter and everything. This is still actually, I would say, oh, I was gonna say slightly favorable for Beisu, but unfortunately. The ultimate tackle there, again, not a real reversal, not like a frame one reversal, but it is just such a scary option. Makes it very scary to leave gaps in your pressure and try to frame trap Vasaraga, because he can just absolutely blow you up with that if he connects. And it looks like Beisu's going to go for another character swap here, possibly back to 2B. I'm not sure if they play a third character. No, it looks like it is 2B. Yeah, 2B again, I have to imagine. Uh, Vasaraga does like to sort of be able to uh, control his space in neutral a little bit here. I can't imagine he can do that very easily against 2B, so this should be pretty tough. We'll have to see. Quirk's been playing very well so far, so we saw Blast overcome a uh, unfortunate matchup for them in, in the Uno 2B. Let's see if uh, Quirk can do the same thing. I'm not certain that 2B Vasaraga is a bad matchup, but uh, I, I just my, my my intuition tells me it is. Yeah, Quirk did recently have Master, that's true, and they're playing, uh, they're playing very well. You can tell that they've definitely leveled up here, for sure. Oh, baby. Just barely missing on the times of fear that doesn't get punished for it. 2M once again. That is something. I, I was just playing some uh, some sets against Fuselet on ranked here right before, or one set, I suppose, right before the tournament started. And uh, Vasaragas, a lot of the good Vasaragas, it seems they really like to go for your toes, man. They get so much off that 2M button. You really have to be careful. Uh, just like walking back and forth or doing anything in the in the, in the the sweep range there, right? The Vasaraga does hit you with 2M. A lot of times can go right into the EX steppers there and blow you up. But as I'm saying this, Beisu has found a really nice corner combo here on Quirk. This is some serious damage on Vasaraga. Like, Vasaraga's got a lot of health. That is some seriously absurd damage that it's got dealt out there. Or just a starter there in the mid-screen. But, oh, unfortunately, is going to... Oh, interesting. I was going to say, is going to bait the jump. Oh, no. A little bit of nerves there, possibly, from Beisu. Did successfully bait out the uh, the ultimate reversal there from Quirk, but doesn't manage to really capitalize off of it. 
is going to be Quirk putting themselves on set point. It is, again, a big part of fighting games is not just not making your own mistakes, it is capitalizing on your opponents. And that's exactly what Quirk was able to do there to put themselves on set point. So let's see. Ooh, does manage to keep their toes safe from the 2M there with the back dash, puts them out of range. Nice little mid screen conversion there from Quirk. Get them some corner carry, get them some damage. Not so bad. Meter, again, very easy to come by in this game. So don't be afraid to spend some meter on ultimate skills if you think it's worthwhile. Actually, somewhat able to uh, swing their scythe here and keep base web bay. Let's see. Oh, and that aerial. Solid conversion there. Big, big chunk of chip for blocking the times of fear. Let's see. Again, this is sort of at this mid range. I would sort of expect it to. Ooh, I was going to say I would sort of expect it to favor 2B, but this quirk has been so good with their spacing and their neutral. Basically, has not found an answer yet, and they might be out of time. They got one more interaction here that could potentially kill them. Just for their life in the tournament here. This is Luda's side of the bracket. Ooh, doesn't quite manage to get uh, blown up for that jump, though. The U, the U follow ups there from Boss Raga. Slightly different move. Oh, and misses the throw, though. I, I, You know what? Quirk reacted that faster than I did. I did not react to the whiff throw by the time that Quirk had already sent that normal out. Tries to run up there. Voss, again, just uh, such a such a large boy. Sometimes you think he's in range of the throw, but he's actually a little bit further back than you give him credit for. So, Unfortunate whiff throw there from Besu, but that is going to be Quirk moving on. It was uh, very well played by, by Besu against both of their master rank opponents there. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, uh, Quirk, Quirk and Blast in, in tandem there are going to send them out of the tournament. But well played. Well played to both players. Now it's going to be Quirk not quite in loser side of top eight. Just yet, I don't think, uh, but we're going to be moving on here regardless in the loser side of the bracket. All right, we've got our next side of loser side here. We've got uh, Dragon of Montreal versus, uh, or he's, he's on, oh, he's on the sword. Wait, he, yeah, no, he, is, he plays swords. What am I talking about? For some reason, I was like, wait, he doesn't play swords. But yeah, Dragon on the swords here versus Suki on the Narmaya. This will be an interesting match. Uh, this, I, swords, swords is always a fun uh, fun character to watch, I feel like, you know? It's, uh, it's just, he, he, whatever, whatever happens to him, he's always, he's always uh, slugging, which is exactly what we like to see. Taking on a pretty gal like use a double-edged sword, says Soros. He's a, he's a, you know, he's a product of his time. Okay, let him, let him, let him be, let him be. All right, so let's see. What's the round start option here? Oh man, getting immediately clipped out there, but nothing, nothing too bad. That ex slip, of course, plus there. Tries to, oh, I was gonna say yeah. Get, tries to, uh, the Soros does have that armor, right? He can kind of, if you put uh, too many gaps in your pressure, he can sort of just armor out there. It's, it's a little bit like Two uh, B's Witch Time Shinigami that you can pull there, if you are familiar with that. Okay, Brave Counter, get off me. Soros does have a very good 6XL, by the way. His 6XL confirms into... Uh, uh, all of top 8 is best of 5, yes. Uh, his 6XL confirms into his, I think, Stand M, like, really, really cleanly, so... Very, very nice little tool for him there. However, yeah, Dragon, Dragon fighting right out of the corner. He's got a bunch of Soros' uh, knuckle-cracking stacks there. It'll help him out if he does manage to get to install. I find install is, is pretty rare in, like, actual Soros play, but we'll have to see. Maybe we'll get it right now. Oh, no, unfortunately, we will not. We will get... Uh, he gets... Kind of uh, caught out by the ultimate flip there into a full combo. That's going to be super taking the first round. Yeah, Swords' install is very interesting in, in theory, but I feel like uh, with how good his ultimate skills are and just how much you want to be spending your meter a lot of the time, look, I don't really see Swords going to install in these sort of bracket matches very often. Yeah, but here, here it is, right? Swords is all about this kind of staggered plus frame pressure, right? All right. Ooh, gets, gets parried right out of there. That is, I mean, that's always something good, right? Parries, and if someone's going to be leaving a bunch of gaps in their offense, with those plus friends, right? A uh, parry or a DP is going to be the ultimate solution for that. Gets the overhead. So is no meterless DP, but doesn't mean he can't kick you in the face. He's got 50 meter at the very least. All right. Kind of. Oh, I was gonna say. Oh, I was. I was gonna say kind of just waiting each other out here. I, I didn't realize that armor was gonna work out. I thought it was. I guess it's active for a little bit longer than I thought it was, and that's what we were talking about earlier. When Soros gets those six XLs, he gets some very nice conversions off of them, kind of uh, in a can there. That's gonna be Dragon taking that second game. Okay, round start dash punch and round start jump over that. Suki, uh, the, the universal round start jumping forward or jumping neutral is, is it pretty much the universal sign of I think you're going to do something crazy on on uh, immediately here, so I don't trust you. And they were right. They were right. Oh, okay, a little bit of a drop combo, I think, there from Dragon. But still good damage, good corner carry here. They're still in a pretty advantageous position as of right now. They're back to mid screen just about, but as I say that, all the way back to the corner goes Suki, taking this throw. A scary position here. Next hit is probably going to kill. Soros does big damage. His, his damage is kind of free and easy too sometimes. However, going to get his Brave Counter uh, whiffing on that EX flip there. And Super Skybound. Already alive. Soros is one of the characters with a little bit more health. Right? He's got 17k compared to the average of 16. And the big boys, Vastrog and Ladiva, having uh, 18 there. But So he's, he's alive, but he's in danger for sure here. Okay. Doesn't get blown up on a wake up at the very least. Goes for the armor. Doesn't get quite anything out of it. But doesn't get uh, blown up for his trouble. Ooh, and a DP. That's good. This is very good. 
It's uh, not quite chipped for Suki yet, I was going to say, but doesn't matter if you just get thrown and die. There's a lot of chip damage. That ultimate, uh, I think it's 2-2-U two, two there from Soros, the sort of uh, jumping, exploding volcano punch. Soros is, man, Soros is, uh, Soros is moves. Are, like, I have no idea what any of the moves are called, but all Soros' moves, I just want to come up with these silliest descriptions for all of them. There's a lot of chip damage there. I'm going to put uh, Suki in a scary situation. The dragon's able to capitalize on with the throw to take that first game. And now... Another whiff parry, one's leading to a uh, mild punish there. Not, not, you know, worse things have happened for whiffing your DP, but this, another big counter hit here. Lots of chip coming out once again. Brave counter, get off me 2H. Just like some, some really nasty starters the Dragon has been getting this entire round. And is Suki dead? Indeed they are. This is why, man, jumping, jumping is a real sp spooky time in this game. Lots of characters just get these absolutely massive combos off their 2Hs, so... You gotta be real confident that your opponent is not ready for it if you're gonna jump straight at them out of the corner like that. Okay, better start to the round so far from Suki. Pushing Dragon to the corner here. Able to get some pressure early on, hopefully. That uh, 2M that, that they're rocking there in the Kagura stance, the unsheathed stance, is plus for Narmaya, so... Speaking of plus frames, though. I mean, I think actually all of those, uh, I don't believe, are plus. I think he's got uh, the, the EX version that is plus, and I think there's a slower version that's also plus. But those might not have been, actually. Okay, some some noobs back and forth, some foozies here. Oh, runs right into the armor, unfortunate there. Not what Suki meant to do, I'm sure. Maybe they thought it wouldn't be active for quite so long, but Soros can just sit there and keep flexing for a real long time. Oh, okay, doesn't get caught out by the ultimate flip this time. Dragon kind of adapting to that option as the set goes on. Not getting caught out by it quite as much, but gets his DP baited. He's not dead. Actually, yeah, it wasn't even that, uh, wasn't that horrible of a, of a punish necessarily, but... He, has to, he now has to sit there and take more of this offense in the corner. The second DP, though. Second time's the charm, they always say. And also manages to roll out of the corner and punches Narmaya right in her pretty little horns there to settle this one 2-0 in favor of Dragon. Unfortunately, there's going to be Suki out of the tournament, but very well played there, Dragon. You know, a pretty pretty, a pretty big, beefy Soros. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's... Uh, kicks, get, get, get in here, man. All right, and ain't no rest for the Wicked here for Dragon of Montreal. He, he just... He just got done fighting Suki, but this is how loser's side of the bracket goes, man. Sometimes you've got to do a whole lot of matches right in a row. Especially it gets worse the later in you get to, right? you got to do like loser's finals and then grand sometimes right after one, one after the other. Uh, but yes, in any case, Dragon and, and Kix here, both fighting. Kix we saw earlier on stream again, the UL. Pretty pretty good stuff from them that I've seen so far. We'll have to see. This is an S++ matchup here, so both pretty pretty capable players to be sure. Ooh, doesn't quite get the uh, conversion off of that, but catches the toes into some more Aura Aura going there. 6XL from Sora is, again, a very scary move because you can't get such great conversions off of it compared to some of the cast. Brave Counter, get off me. Uh, using Brave Counter offensively there is Dragon to basically continue his turn, right? DP. Kicks in a scary situation now. And basically any any little love tap from Dragon is going to kill here. Doesn't fall for the armor, though. Raging Strike, not bad. Now Dragon's losing all of their Brave Points. Uh, at this point, any hit will kill with them having no Brave Points if, if, if uh, Kicks can get any kind of conversion. 50% extra damage. Oh, whiffs the throw, but no no punish from Kicks necessarily. Wasn't quite ready for it. Spot dodge is the ultimate dash punch, and that is almost certainly going to be Dragon going down in this first round. God damn. That was a really good spot dodge there on that dash. Good, uh, very good composure there by Kicks. They were pretty low in, on HP, like, very early on in that round. They didn't let it make them panic. They didn't, they didn't let that make them panic or do anything silly. They stayed clean. They stayed uh, composed. And they were able to blow up Dragon for using all their break points there. And throws them right out of the armor. Kicks definitely uh, clearly having a little bit of experience in, in the Sora's matchup. Got some idea what to do against the tools and how to pressure this character. Oh no, but nothing not, nothing quite coming out of the 6XL there for Dragon. Whoa, whiffs the Raging Strike though. Hits the low there, nice. That is the thing, right? Again with you all, you gotta hit her with lows, overheads, or projectiles. The beat. The, uh, the stance from you all, though. Spot that is preemptive, you said. Damn. I mean, yeah. You know, they, 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 they know the hard read. Got them uh, the goods there, so... Incredibly well done stuff by Kicks regardless. Oh, and that spot dodge, unfortunately, is not going to be quite what you're looking for there. It does recover in time out of that overhead to just punch Dragon in the face for his troubles there. So let's see. Still, you know, still still at least one more game to go here. Dragon's got uh, a chance in this, for sure. Oh my god. Okay, punches her right out of her slide there. Overhead. Yeah, I see. Yeah, the spot dodging is definitely a big deal there. The preemptive spot dodging on the reefs. Oh, and the, the DP Sora has got some serious aerobics flexibility in those old man legs of his, but not getting able to kick quite that high to reach up to where Kicks was in the air there. And suddenly, this round is not looking so good for Montreal. Find themselves in the pressure here, uh, in the corner here, getting pressured into a super here. Fixes, overkicks his brave point situation a little bit. Right, and obviously, does a whole bunch of damage to Montreal. 
Let's see. Oh, what? In God's name? So, I believe what happened there is Montreal meant to DP, and uh, they got side switched on, basically. So, instead of DP, they got the Aura Aura, but it worked out regardless. So, you know what? Uh, in, in, the, in the wise words of the ancient Mayans, we take those, and the spot dog is not working out in, in uh, Kix's favor this time. Dragon ready for those preemptive spot dodges. Why is just kind of spamming the 2L there, right? To just get some kind of hitbox out to blow up the spot dog as soon as it was over with. So very, very well played for stuff from uh, Dragon there. Taking capitalizing on that mistake from Kix uh, to the nth degree. Oh my god. That time, the dash punch losing out to the slide. It, it beat it before, but I guess yeah, it's all it's all a matter of time, right? And when the active frames uh, intersect and all that. All right. Dragon finding himself pretty low on HP to start this, but oh, this is bad. This is bad. It's a pretty nice starter here. For uh, it wasn't if he has, if he had gotten the actual starter with the U dash punch, it would have been even more damage. But still a pretty beefy chunk of health to take off of kicks there from Dragon, but gets him right in the end of the armor there. Incredibly well timed by kicks, as they're going to put themselves on set point. Potentially eliminate Dragon from the bracket here and qualify for loser side top eight. Two birds with one stone. Okay, so let's see. Starts off very aggressively with the last start jump forward there. Dragon not ready to 2H it though. Oh, and gets a brave counter potentially baited out there. Accidental raging strike gets poked for the trouble, but at least not a huge conversion. Once again, another possible conversion missed out on by kicks there. It's uh, it's getting tense here again. This is for you know potentially top eight qualification. Loser side of the bracket. It's all all the marbles. That one is going to be plus if you, if you let Sora's really rear back and charge that one up. Okay. Ooh, nice spot dodge there on the little on the little low. Keeps their toes protected. However, once again, uh, dr dread it, run from it. Your toes get clipped all the same. Your Jordans will get creased, regardless of whether you want it to or not. And solid, convert really nice conversion off of that air-to-air -air from Dragon. God damn, that is some, that is a lot of damage to get off of an air-to-air -air conversion. It's going to give him the round for it. That is some really, really good stuff, especially in such a scary situation there. Right? I mean, if Dragon loses, loses that round, he's out of the entire tournament. So the wherewithal to get that in that moment. Incredibly impressive, and now holding on, playing it up 1-1. Now it's Kix, in, in a, in a, is in a similar situation. Now they're the one looking at elimination alongside Dragon here. Let's see if they have the same sort of uh, mental fortitude that he showed in that last game. So far, no one with a huge advantage yet. Dragon definitely got the better of the screen positioning, but gets his toes swept right out from under him. Kix with the throw there, a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty big distance. Maybe uh, didn't realize he would knock Dragon so far away in that circumstance. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, man. UL's got so many different plus frames. You can get counter hits so easily by this character. Doesn't fall for the armor. Dragon keeps trying to put that out and get them to uh, to stick a careless button into it. But Kix has been, honestly, pretty good at avoiding that so far. Catch him on the way in there with a the low. Blocks that. That is safe. Oh, I like the idea from Dragon, right? Does the safe on block but minus ultimate dash punch there immediately into the armor to try and bait something out. But Kix doesn't fall for it. Oh man, chip situation now for Dragon. Gets the throw. This is scary though. DP could potentially kill them here as well. Some oh some fearless stuff. Spot dodge tries to bait a DP and oh my god, they actually stay alive. They don't die to chip. That is just an absolute monster of a comeback there. From Dragon of Montreal to put themselves on set point now. Once again, kicks. Is the one facing elimination. Let's see what they can do. <laughs> yeah, Gabba keeps getting auto-modded. Kix didn't want the DP. I mean, I understand because, again, DP was the obvious option there, right? Because obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's invincible and it kills Dragon with chip there. So they're trying to hold on to it, show some trigger discipline, but Dragon kind of blowing them up for it. Should have SSB aids, possibly. Okay, and now Dragon once again finding himself with some corner offense right here. Health advantage and meter advantage and now break point advantage too. Four kicks. So I would say overall, without the side to corner positioning, this round is firmly in their favor. Of course, Dragon got one more round even if they lose this one. We'll have to see. It's, looking, it's not looking so good for them right now. Text that throw the, the, the Aki way as well. Actually, with the throw button. I'm not able to get a punish on that low there. I believe it was spaced out well enough. Oh, okay. Minus frames there. Not 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 uh, punishable. Though. Only minus is that Sora's ultimate dash punch. But gets caught trying to throw out a low there to beat the shimmy from uh, overkicks. And instead... Overkick going to put themselves on set point, and now, one way or the other, this is the last round of the set. It's been a crazy set with a lot of back and forth so far, but one of these players is getting eliminated here no matter what happens. So let's see who's going to lock in the best. Solid start here for Dragon, getting a lot of nice damage on, on kicks early here. Nice conversion once again. Dragon very clean with their combos, and this is going to be death. No, no, not quite yet. Text that throw. That was for that was for their, uh, for their life also. Oh my god, this is very looking very, very scary. Four kicks at this point. DP, get off, get off me, but... He's still in a lot of danger. One more special, and you will be in chip distance, or the old man will just show you his aerobics routine and kick you right in your little fox jaw there. 
as Dragon of Montreal with an incredibly well-played set there. I mean, bo from both players. Kix also playing very well there, but Dragon showing some serious composure in those very scary situations, in those last hit situations they're able to pull it out. We are now on to our winner's top eight. Our entire top eight has been decided, so now every match from, from now on we will get to see. So we've got Gabagool versus Council here, two incredibly strong players. Of course, Ladiva Cagliostro is, uh, is quite the matchup here, but uh, at the end of the day, no matter how bad the matchup is, it always comes down to the players. We'll have to see who can pull it out here. Good start. Oh, I was going to say good start by Council so far, but I'm going to call it hip thrust because it makes people uncomfortable. That hip thrust there is uh, going to be punishable. Gabagool taking full advantage of that to get himself into a nicer position here in the mid-screen. Text to throw the Aki way. You like to see it. Yeah, this is uh, one of the things where you got to be very, as Ladiva, you got to be very proactive about getting those traps out of the way when you're fighting Cagliostro. Even if she tags you with a spear or something, as long as those traps aren't there to make that conversion even scarier, it can be somewhat worthwhile for you. Okay. Ultimate clothesline there. Not getting spot dodge at least. A blocked ultimate clothesline? That's fine, because that, that at least takes a brave counter. The nightmare scenario is obviously to get spot dodge. Some good patience here from both players on neutral. Ultimate trap is a really big problem. Yeah, I was gonna say. Ultimate trap, you can't really do uh you can't really do any of the shenanigans you could normally do against some of Cagliostro's traps. Ultimate trap basically just says no. It is a giant purple and blue stop sign that Cagliostro just plants down in the middle of the screen there. Oh god, the brave counter of the brave counter. Blocks the brave counter, and brave counter is the brave counter. And of course, brave counter is the brave counter of the brave counter. And let's just stop saying brave counter because it doesn't sound like a word anymore. Uh, but anyways, once again, no matter how bad this matchup might be, the way Lidiva works, as someone is saying here, uh, it's very true, right? Once Lidiva gets you in the corner, uh, basically everyone's the same size when they're on their back. Excellent. Tries to go for a little bit of a setup there with the jabs. Doesn't quite work out for them. 6-2-3-U being a horrid failure, as it always tends to be in my experience. Council big, very big for them there to make it out of that corner, but... Once to get sniped out by the jump U there from Gabo. Manages to jump over one of those normals there. Yeah, simply get in, toss the coin, and be right every time. Doesn't matter how bad the matchup is, if Ladiva gets in, she can win basically anything. Obviously, it's very middle offense too, but if she gets lucky, basically. Or maybe, let's not call it luck, it's all reads. Grappler players, you know, when we, when we miss the read, we say we got unlucky, and when we, when we get the read, we say that we were just like, oh, we're just so big brain, and we, we read, you know, we've, we've studied your entire fucking lifetime since you were born, and we knew that everything you, just, you had done led you to make that decision, where you guessed command grab there, and that's where we struck you. Uh, in any case, oh, gets killed by the 2M there, but no conversion from Gabba, a little bit too far away there, or a little bit too slow on the headbutts. Regardless, Council getting away, uh, scot-free there, mostly. RH, that button tends to be a really big problem for Lidiva in this matchup, but oh god. That, oh, that uh, EX SPD there has got to be a mistake from Gabba. And uh, Council not jumping, not falling for the ultimate uh, the air SPD shenanigan there. 2 H's of traps, get him out of there. Those traps that are placed above you as Lidiva tend to be a lot harder, right? Because 2 H's is such, so much more of a committal option than 2 M if you want to get rid of them. It's a scary situation for Gabba, but also no break points on the side of Council, so I was going to say one touch from either character will just blow the other one up, but. The ultimate trap is just such a difficult situation to deal with there. And Council taking full advantage of that to take the first game in this top eight here. And of course, top eight, don't forget, is a first to three now. We are doing best of fives for all of top eight. So Gabba's still got a long time here to potentially try and adapt. But Council has been looking very strong so far. A couple of back throws, though. A little bit of a silly, uh, silly, silly thing there. Back getting back thrown out of the corner. But if it works, it works. Big conversion into the ultimate close on off of 2M there by Gabba. And now, here you go. 50-50. Strike or throw? What, what's, uh, what are you feeling? Guess a strike. Guess correctly. Council uh, was just down back in there. But seemed, oh, but no no technical SPD from Gabba there, which is why the uh, uh, SPD did not end up killing. However, that is one thing, right? Ultimate headbutt there can be used, actually, to beat out Brave counters. It will armor right through them and blow you up for your trouble. So it's an interesting little option. That move does have its, have its uh, faults, but definitely has its use cases as well. Yeah, we're trying to meet him up in the air there, potentially air throw him or something, but Council very ready for that. Bonks them right out there with the air-to-air. -air. Normal. Oh, and does not get the, the throw. And for the trouble, they're not going to get side swap combo into the trap. Oh, man. Kelly Elstro combos do look really cool. I want you to get all her traps set up, though. He's doing geometry on your ass. Makes you feel like you're, uh, like you're getting outsmarted, even in the middle of getting hit. Oh, and another big conversion off the 2M into, into ultimate clothesline there. That is a very scary thing Ludiva can do, and oh my god, just gets clipped by the Raging Strike there, counter hit out of something. Maybe try to do a Brave Counter or something like that, but unfortunately uh, for Council, that is going to be Gabba blowing them up with that Raging Strike there and tying it up 1-1. One -one. Again, 1-1, one -one, huge difference. You always, you'd, you'd much rather be 1-1 one -one than 2-0, but 
Let's see. That far right again. That button right there. I if I were if I were counsel, I mean I'm no I'm no Cagliostro expert, but at least in my experience in this matchup, that far H right there, that is an absolute nightmare for Libra to deal with, but Bates, the spot dodge out hard called out there by Gabba into the EX SPD, and that is actually some real damage with the one brave point and the EX command grab there. Ooh, but toilet tax is going to be paid by Gabba here. Reversal super though. God damn, that was a Lodiva round if I ever did see one, huh? Bates the spot dodge into EX SPD into reversal super into death. What a time to be alive. Well played by Gabba there. Trying to put themselves up 2-0, potentially. Or 2-1, rather. Sorry, over Council here. Let's see. Okay. Good stuff from Council here, mounting an offense. You gotta feel comfortable in neutral against Ladiva here, as Gabby Ostro, but honestly, Gabba's just been kind of getting uh, the better of Council in a couple of these neutral inter interactions. We'll have to see how it uh, shapes up as the set goes on, but... Because this is, this is where you don't want to be. The idea with this matchup, I believe, is that Kagliostro can basically, hopefully, not have to spend very much time in the corner, right? It should be hard for Libra to win the neutral and push Kagliostro through the corner. But when she does manage it, it can be very, very scary. Especially Kagliostro, if she doesn't have 50 meters, she has no reversal. With all that being said, as I'm yapping on about that, Kagliostro, or uh, Council there, just blowing up. But what is the counter hit there? What are those red counter hit sparks at the very end? It was after the Raging Chain. Is that the trap? The trap doing weird things? I'm not certain, but whatever it is, uh, Gabba is very, very dead. And uh, Council now tying it up. 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one in games, 1-1 one, one in rounds. Let's see. It's a much better start to the round for Council also. Yeah, that far H, once again, such a scary button for Libra to deal with. Ooh, and manages... Yeah, so tries to 2-H the traps there, right? Again, it's very... Oh, it's very important to be preactive with taking out those traps as Ladiva, but the 2-H is still very, very committal. That's why the ones that go above you are so much harder than the ones that go on the ground for Libra to deal with. Okay, blocks that. Doesn't, uh, doesn't actually Brave Counter out, just eats it. Eats the plus frames there. Now they're fully out of break points. This is scary. Ultimate clothesline. If, if, if Gabba manages to catch out Council with an ultimate clothesline or something, it'll be death. But unfortunately, that EX hip thrust, again, I've talked about this earlier. Uh, Council does love doing that. I think that's maybe a call up doing something uh, doing something committal in neutral. But it is very punishable if you dodge it. And uh, even if it's, if it's unspaced, even if you block it. So Gabba Ghoul with a very strong spot dodge on that. And that is going to be him taking this 2-1. So we got one more game here. It is still best of five, but they now are up in the set count. Scary times if you're Council. Let's see how they can adapt to Gabba's neutral uh, game plan. Because it's been working out pretty well for him so far. Caxes them out there with a the jump M to get rid of the traps. And if you hit Cag, that's obviously the best way to get rid of the traps. But it's all, sometimes easier said than done. Oh, the 2U going to whiff in dramatic fashion there. And Council taking full advantage of it with a big, nasty punish here to Gabba Ghoul's face. This is it scary? Ultimate trap? Okay. But worst things have happened when Cagliostro gets you to block ultimate trap. So, in the grand scheme of things, that wasn't so bad. And I see now what Gabba was trying to go for earlier with rolling through the trap. I thought it was just a, a bit of a troll option. But that actually worked out quite well for them. All right. Gets this full corner combo in here. I'm going to get all the way corner to corner. Get some pressure. And, oh, are you jumping? You are not. Absolute robbery, man. Just walk right up to them and super skybound dart. What a time to be alive. This is how it goes, man. This is how, uh, again, you can... This matchup, I think, is bad for Ladiva, right? But there is always just this, this character. They can just get one touch on you there, take you to the corner, and then something like that. And immediately you just find yourself with Gabagool on set points here, potentially, about to knock Council down to lose side of the bracket. Very solid back throw. They're getting a lot of value out of back throw in this matchup is uh, is Gabba. Going for the optimal Ladiva stuff here. Let's see uh, how, they, how they work it out. Okay, wanted this for... I believe this gives Ladiva a safe jump. It's got some, some pretty nasty... Oh, the frame kill with the light heavy there. Or the light headbutt there. Into the heavy SPD. Pays a toilet attack, but still it's looking very advantageous for Gabba here. Gets his Brave counter baited, though. And thrown right out of it. Oh, suddenly. Shansu for Council out of the corner. Gabba on one Brave point. This could be pretty scary. Doesn't get the conversion into ultimate clothesline there. Not reacting to the hit confirm quite fast enough. Let's see. All right. Oh, gets the trap out. That's definitely Gabba's number one objective there. Doesn't get hit by the cross-up teleport. This is very, very scary if your name is Council. At this point, it's a, it's a true 50-50, right? Any strike or throw could be the death of you. So let's see. An ultimate SPD is going to be one of Ladiva's. I mean, Ladiva's fastest actual button there, right? Her five, her only five-frame button is ultimate SPD. God damn, Gabba catching Council out on the way in there with that ultimate SPD to wrap it up and take that three-one over Council. Very well played to both players there. But Gabby just seemed to have a little bit more of an idea of what to do there in the neutral. All right, now we're on to our next match of Winner's Side Top 8 here. And we've got Blast Hamber versus Hostile. So Blast Hamber here on the Andre and Hostile on the Avatar. 
It's gonna be very interesting. Hostile, of course, aka Call Me the Bank. So it's a cool, it's a cool tag. I like that. Uh, this is gonna be, it's gonna be very interesting. I think. Again, uh, I, I, I can't really, I can't really, I don't know enough about either of these characters to try and figure out how the matchup looks. But you know how it is. Every single time this character shows up on commentary, I gotta talk shit, man. I gotta talk about how I have a trouble. I just, he just, April second, man. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath. I, I want this character to be cool so bad. I just don't think that he is right now. So we'll have to see. For now, though. Good start to the round here for Br pro Abel Hater. I don't. I promise I'm not. You know what it is? Sometimes loving somebody means telling hard truths. Okay. I I was I was when I when I when I first I'm not hating I'm I'm not hating on him. I'm not hating. I was, listen, the whole thing. The whole point is I thought that Avatar was going to be really strong when I started the video game, and he's not. And I want him to be cool. I want him to be strong. I want Avatar players to beat my ass every time I run into them. I think he's a cool. He's a cool archetype, man. He's a cool archetype. I want him to be stronger. I want access to. I want access to know that he's weak, so they buff him. In any case, with all that being said, Blast uh, taking that first round there over over hostile. So let's see. Yeah, good old. This is this this could be problematic here. All the spear thrust uh, zoning coming out here. I mean, Avatar does have a couple of, uh, of full screens, right? That's gonna be death, I think. Unfortunately, that uh, corner conversion there from Blast. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Avatar needs more health, and that's it. I mean, yeah, but he needs a lot more health because he's, he also does a lot of damage to himself in the meantime. He doesn't eat like 16k, I don't think would even necessarily be uh, enough if all you're going to do is give him more health. If Avatar is good, this game would be very scary. Yeah, but I like that. He's a cool character. I like this archetype. I, I like when they're, I like when they're, uh, when they're going nuts on my ass, even though it's usually a very bad matchup uh, for the grappler sometimes. But yes, anyway, hostile, uh, making the switch over here to the better Belial, as it were. Uh, now, now I can now I can stop hating and getting called out for being a hater. Uh, so, now this this is pod racing right here. Belial, this is this is uh, this is one hell of a character. So let's see how how it uh, works out for hostile here. Gets the uh, parry. I think that was the command grab actually. Gets called out there by blasts. Spear thrust zoning. This is this is the ground based footsies that Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising is known for. Really nasty chip damage there. Uh, Anila's sheep move gets a lot of hate for how much chip it does, but I feel like that, uh, that ultimate spin thrust from... Uh, that ultimate spear spin, I suppose, I'll call it, from Andre there, is, uh, it kind of flies under the radar. That thing really just eats your health alive when you block it, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, chip situation. Scary times up to be alive if your name is hostile. It's going to be Blast going up another round in the set here. Trying to go up 2-0 in this set. Again, 2-0 is a huge advantage in any sort of first to three situation. So, we'll have to see. DP gets baited out, but... Oh, I was gonna say not 2H on the way down, but still punished. Still punished. Not a huge punish. Worst things have happened for getting, for getting your DP blocked in the past, surely. Command grab, that's good shit, man. Again. Reactable in quotation marks, but it can be very difficult with all the other things you're looking out for with Lyle sometimes. Alright, nice tech there. Spear thrust neutral once more. Not uh, not so bad yet for for hostile. Right? Not taking a whole bunch of damage. Got him clipped a couple of times, but unless Andre gets uh, there are a couple of starters Andre has that give him some pretty good damage. Otherwise, he is kind of just poking at you a little bit, little by little there. Death by a thousand cuts. Bly on the other hand does the big damages. Uh, so this is not. You're not dead. You're not dead. You're not dead. You're not dead. Nah, you're not dead. You're not dead. It was a super sky bomb though. Are you? Not, um, I'm gonna say you're not dead. Okay. But regardless, it's a lot of damage. Holy crap, it was actually way closer than I gave it credit for. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about, man. Blyle does the big deep sometimes if he can get uh, his hands on you. Especially if you're missing uh, Brave Points, like Blast Hammer was there. Not DP. Gonna seal it here. I don't think that was... Uh, I don't think that was Chip, actually. I think Blast still had another... Uh, enough, uh, like a pixel of health there. But has got caught out doing something to try and beat the DP there. Or trying to press a button, essentially. Got DP'd for his trouble. Okay. So pretty strong round from Hostile there, but now finds himself once again in the Uno Blender here in the corner. Oh my god, tries to throw the parry. But was actually out of range, however... The parry takes long enough to go off that he doesn't get punished for from that throw anyways. Spear thrust, gaming right now. Nice jump over there to punish it in the recovery frames. Doesn't get a full conversion, but still shows a solid idea of what to do against that option, potentially, in the neutral. However, health rapidly dwindling. Uh, again, oh, god damn, that is like half his health he just lost the chip there. And it's gonna happen again. Ooh, but the parry, well done stuff, and oh my god. What in god's name. <laughs> Minus frames into Super Skybound Dart, absolute madman. No Brave Points now on Blast. I mean, Barry obviously is an option here, but if he gets touched, he will just explode and get reduced to Atoms. So let's see. Command Grab not going to kill, but incredibly high damage with that missing Brave Point. And Back Throw is going to tie this up 1-1 in favor of Hostile here. Incredibly good composure there to make that comeback. That was some, some spooky stuff, man. He was on, like, no health for, like, since the clock said 85 or something. But he, just, he, he stayed calm. He stayed collected. He, he made the comeback. He uh, made some good guesses in times where it mattered the most. He ties himself up again. Being 1-1 in a first of three. That's what I'm talking about. Being down 2-0 is a massive mountain to climb. So you gotta you gotta imagine the hostiles gonna be very happy about this. So let's see. 
All right. Once again, a good start to the round for Blast Amber here. It's been the case a lot of the times, but Hostile has been able to fight his way back from these sort of disadvant disadvantageous beginnings pretty often here. Gets caught by Spear Thrust once again, though again. Not, not, not huge damage or anything. Not something you'd be too scared about. Not, not, not that parry either. Andre does have a parry that gives him a full combo, but it's not, uh, it's not that one. I think it's the medium one. It's uh, funny enough, not the EX one. All right. Uh, Andre caught live on stream, losing to Pinwheel. I always affect his legacy. I don't know. Oh, gets thrown for his trouble there. Just run up, walk up, and throw him, man. Sometimes it works. The the ancient classic. I'll just walk up slowly and down smash. Little spear spinning action. Oh, that's whiff punish, but hey, no uh, no gigantic conversion there for hostile. Good news for if your name is Blast Hammer, that's for damn sure. DP out of the pressure there. Spear thrust gaming once again. DNF Inquisitor looking ass, damn right. Oh, what the hell? Okay, that, that brave power, that brave counter did not go uh, quite as well as expected there because of the medium DP and how quickly it shifts Lyle up there. And now, for his trouble here, getting eaten this entire combo with the Skybound Dart. Looking awfully bad for a blast here. Low on health, low on brave points. Got a meter advantage, I guess, but 5H from Belial there. Just covers so much screen space so quickly. So, so good at just whiff punishing people with that move. All right, once again, fully tied up here. 1-1 in games, 1-1 in sets. It's been the tale of our top eight so far. Let's see how it goes. All right, blocks all that, not too bad. Or hostile, gets thrown first. That was that feels like that throw connects from way further away than I'm used to that throw connecting from. So, who knows? Maybe maybe Blast or Hostile moved up a little bit there while I wasn't looking. In any case, nice little mid-screen conversion here off of the pinwheel. And in the cancel into command grab. That is dirty stuff there. Just trying to catch you, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I'm watching this whole big cutscene avatar or, or Belial combo. Let me just uh, put my controller down real quick. Nope. Gets thrown out of it for your trouble there. Pretty good situation for Blast now. Really solid mid-screen conversion. That's like, that was a lot more damage than I was expecting out of that hit there from Blast, but you got you got some pretty good damage off of it. And now a lot a lot more even is this game. Of course, the most notable thing here, you look at the top of your screen there, three brave points to zero. So Hostile's got some serious defensive uh, oomph behind him here, whereas Blast really does not. Yeah, right there, brave counter, for example. Text to throw the Aki way. You love to see it. And the parry is actually going to do it. That I was, for a second there, I was like, huh? What happened? The parry, doesn't the parry have a follow-up? But it took its, its sweet time to get there. So it's 2-1 now in favor of Blast. Uh, still one more game to go potentially, at least here. But yeah, that, that, that ultimate parry took a little bit of time to drop the, the hammer there on Hostile. So I thought for a second if you hit, if you hit the airborne, it didn't actually do the follow-up or something. Oh my god, that 2M actually does get kind of crushed by the jumping dive kick there from Blast. But that move just recovers so damn fast that Blast wasn't even punished for it. Uh, it's 2-1 it's right now to Blast. 2-1 Blast Hostile is the, is the score right now. Pinwheel, once again. Oh my god. I guess uh, Andre's parry there doesn't beat close? Or maybe maybe just uh, that that stomp is pretty slow, right? So maybe it just was the case that the uh, active frames of the parry were over by the time the stomp connected. Regardless of how it worked, it went pretty well for Hostile there. Though, he finds himself with rapidly dwindling HP reserves. As Blast is kind of standing here and Spear Thrust gaming all over his face. Alright. Yeah. Ship damage incoming. He does that. Oh, I guess if he does a big spin, that's gonna be even more chip. Good tech there. Teching, teching the correct way, the Aki way there, was very important for Hostile because it keeps them from going into chip distance. And is this death? No. No. I mean, they got no brave points. Oh my god, I think they're dead. I think Blast is dead. I can't quite believe it. Yeah, it actually wasn't even that close. It actually wasn't even that close. They could have a little bit, a little bit more HP and still died. God damn. Okay, well, very solid conversion there from Hostile to uh, take that round. It's trying to tie, time to tie us up here, 2-2. Two, two. If, if they got anything to say about it, they will not go quietly into that good night. DPs out of that pressure there. Good stuff. Tries to, catches him jumping back with the 6-6L six, six there. It's 2-1 uh, right now. Blast is up 2-1. Hostile down to 1. Uh, people ask it in the chat there. You know how it is. Oh, the surfboard. You got the wall bounce there. Solid stuff. I, I, I am very unfamiliar with Andre's like, combo structure. But it always looks cool. You know, it always looks like he is like, kind of twerking all over you. Could have had Avatar's full health bar and it'll still kill. I mean, okay, hold on. I'm getting accused of being a hater by the chat here, but then they're the ones bringing up uh, how, how easily Avatar dies. You know, suspicious. You claim to hate capitalism, yet you live in a capitalist society. Hmm, curious. Oh, in any case, parry, the, the war of the parries here. Um, as the, the parries back and forth end up in, in Hostile's favor here, but now finds himself pushed into the corner. I'm not an able... I'm, I, I just want my boy able to be stronger. I'm a, Okay, I'm a hater of his current state, okay? Fine, you got me. I, I do hate how he is right now. I want to leave up. Own Venezuela. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, I was going to say, very scary chip situation here for Hostile. And that is, in fact, going to be Blast putting himself on set points here. Let's see. 
if we could clean this up and move on to the winner side of the bracket here to face down Gabagool if he takes this round. So let's, let's see how it goes. Ooh, catch up 5-8, I think that was, in the start up there. Really solid poking from Blast there. Let's keep his turn going, not let Call Me the Bank, aka Hostile, steal it back there. And now gets the wall bounce for the surfboards. You don't want to fight Andre? Well, I got bad news. It's looking really good for Blast right now. Obviously still winnable for Hostile, but Blast has got all of the momentum in this round so far. It's been incredibly dominant. I have to have the corner pressure and just not let it go. Brave counter. He's also got a Brave Point advantage, a Health advantage, and Spear Thrust Gaming once again. As Blast, in a very, very strong performance in that last round there, is going to be sending Hostile down to the loser's side of the bracket. Of course, Hostile, you're still in this, right? You just, just got to head down to loser and uh, loser's side there. And eventually, probably, uh, deal with Fuselet over there. So, uh, good luck with that. But well played to both players. Well played to Blast there. Moving on in the winner's side of the bracket. And now we'll be transitioning over to our loser side real quick. Uh, all right. Well, we are now in our loser side of the bracket here for top eight. So, we've got uh, Lazy Ruin's son, aka Luca here, uh, on the near. Versus Fuselet on the Basaraga. Fuselet uh, getting sent down here by Gabagool in uh, what I'm sure was a quite hard fought match. But unfortunately, we couldn't watch that one on stream. And uh, yeah, once again, no nobody in the loser's bracket is happy about, uh, about Fuselet being here. Uh, Vasaraga, we, we were talking about how he's kind of, you know, not a character when he doesn't have the armor on, but honestly, in Fuselet's hands, this character looks top tier. So, uh, let's see. Let's see what Luka can do here. DP is a good start, right? Get that, get, get the spooky armor man away from you as soon as you can. Nice, brave counter there. Just didn't want to deal with all that Rekka mix. I like it. Sometimes you just, uh, sometimes you don't have to, you know, oh, ideally just pick the right option every time. No, just get the hell off of me, man. First page, imagine Lacey has first page for Nala. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, we were talking about how all of the Nears in this server are Laser Ruins children. And uh, someone in the chat there making an Elden Ring ref. Oh my god, and I'm just armoring straight through the DP. God damn, that is some man mode stuff from Fuselet there. Of course, Death having infinite armor on that, but honestly, as long as Vosvark keeps walking forward, so does he. So, very, very, uh, very interesting interaction there. I, didn't, I, I never really considered that. I hadn't thought about the fact that Vosvark can just do the big steppers right through near DP there. That's actually pretty scary stuff. Of course, Death has a bunch of multi-hit moves. Uh, Vasaraga, if you don't know, has two uh, hits uh, of armor on everything, except for the U follow-up of his Rekka, uh, or, and that has infinite armor, even if he doesn't have soul for it. So, uh, Nier has a couple of different multi-hitting moves that could definitely cause a lot of trouble with uh, how many... Uh, they could definitely break through Vasaraga's armor here, but you see that? Fuzil is just standing there menacingly. He's standing there with the Rekka, and uh, Luka showing him maybe a little bit too much respect there. Oh my god! That's a nice little conversion there with the ultimate fireball. Yeah, that Death Waltz there, that is one of the moves that could probably break through Vosrog's armor there. Three, or actually maybe even more than three, but at least three hits coming out of Death there. It's going to be very hard for, yeah, it is three, good. It's going to be very hard for Vosrog to actually deal with, I think, in neutral. So that's kind of the case for basically every character. This is going to be a conversion. A nice Raging Strike there to get a little bit of a strange hit conversion off of the Death there into a uh, into a kill. Well done by Luca. Tying it up 1-1 one, one here against Fuselet. Let's see how he, how he gets on. Gets battalions for his trouble, but DP once again. Good stuff. Nice little, nice little chunk of damage there. Nice little, uh, you know, 25, 30 percent. It's Vasaraga, 25 percent too, so that means a lot more. Gets reversal DP for his trouble though. Vasaraga again, no meatless DP though. So at this point, if Fuselet gets caught in one of these dangerous situations again, he's going to be in trouble and gets it wrong on the 50-50. That's a very nasty little setup the Nier can do there, and it is just a straight yes unless the Nier times their jump improperly, and it makes it kind of obvious. Luka only having one stock of death left, though, so this is a uh, scary times. Death is now officially gone. This is where, this is where, yeah, this is where Fusa could potentially make his money here. An uncharacteristic drop there on the combo. Maybe, maybe a little bit of a strange time to hit confirm that. Still a long way to go until Death is back, so fusa has got a lot of chances here, and he does not let it go to waste. That is unfortunate. But, uh, well clutched out there, finding his, finding his spots. And Fusa is going to be taking that 1-0 uh, over Luca. Luca still playing very well though, so he's still he's still definitely uh, he's still definitely got it. You know, he, he's got a chance here for sure. He's, he's, it's not like he's getting steamrolled here. I mean, for uh, steam steam trained Basaraga as it were, but he's doing very well. So as long as he just if he if he, if he keeps his composure here and forgets about the fact that he's fighting, you know, uh, a, a, a player as strong as Fusa. Sometimes you got to not worry about the uh, you know you got you got to not worry about the name tag there. You just got to worry about the person in front of you. So if Luka can just put put that behind him, get his mental going straight here, then he's got he's more than certainly got a very good chance at this. For now though, Fuselet getting a very nice start to this round here, getting a lot of damage here on Luka, and uh, some nice corner positioning while he's at it. Gets hit with a DP there, but not uh, nothing nothing too horrible for his trouble. 
All right. That's going to kill, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say, he uh, gets a little bit of a, gets a little bit of a catch up with the toes there with 2M, but I didn't realize it was going to go into a full kill, actually, which is why uh, my tone of voice is a little bit off there. But it's all stuff by Fusel. Trying to put it, trying to go up 2 0 here in the set. Act is out the uh, the death there. Very good jump by Fusel. Who blow up Luca on the way down. Okay, let's see. Battalions there is going to be not plus on block. Oh my god. Gets caught out by the DP there. Okay, not not a not a full volleyball combo back and forth. Things could be worse. Definitely worse things have happened for getting hit by near DP. And speaking of worse things have happened, this is a giant chunk of damage that Luca just ate in the corner here. And now you are in the spooky times. What are you gonna do against uh, against big scary fuse lick man? You're gonna get command grabbed. Is what you're gonna do apparently? That death bolt is really good. Yeah, again, it's got so many active frames. It's got a bunch of hits there that even uh, though fuse lick did spot dodge that, he did get blown up for his trouble. But now, lazy ruined sun on chip range here. Nice throw though. Really solid so far. I mean, there, there's a potential for a comeback here. Oh, but the funny thing about that command grab, depending on uh, sometimes if you uh, when you land in like that any command grabs, the, the timing can be really hard to actually make your way back out. So. Really solid choice of option there by Fuselet, not letting the cross up freak him out. And he takes that up 2-0 now on Luca. Alright, let's see. Nice 6-6L there. Doesn't quite manage to get anything off it, but still. Nice little poke there to uh, to Fuselet. Make sure make sure somebody's home. The times there, I don't think uh, I don't think that was minus enough to be punished, but it was still definitely minus. Uh, the times you have to space it out for it to be plus on block. In any case, once again, Fuselet clipping Luca's toes here. This is something I've definitely noticed, right, with uh, Fuselet and some of these other good Basaragas. Quirk was doing this too, to an extent, right? They just really love, like, 2M really is their button, man. Like, if, if nobody got them, 2M got them. They're just hitting 2M in neutral there, trying to catch your toes all the time. And it's not something you're really used to. Uh, a low being a big combo starter for people is not very common. So I think a lot of people, when they're playing neutral, they're not really looking out for their toes quite as much as you apparently have to be against Basaraga here. Oh my god, the anti-air command grab. Solid reactions there by Fuselet. And it's going to just march right on through that DP, stepping on Nier's toes there, and putting himself on set points versus Luca. Scary time here. Luca's got to figure something out, but of course, quite the uh, quite the challenge in front of them here, in in the uh, in the form of Vassaraga, or at least Fuselet's Vassaraga. Charging up the heavy there, really trying to bait out a spot block or something, but that is going to be very punishable now. So. Luka getting a nice corner conversion here. This is a good start, right? I mean, if you, if you want a, a, a journey of a thousand a reverse 3-0s, starts with a single corner combo, so I like what I'm seeing so far, but Vassaraga going to just march right on out of there with the big steppers. And now back to mid-screen. Ooh, nice. Death Waltz there before the armor can take hold. Puts Luka back in a very advantageous position here in the corner, but gets his toes stepped on. His Jordan's creased by Vassaraga for his trouble. This is looking scary now. Oh my god, I guess it's looking scary, but it was, by the time I got it out, he's had already got the toes swept into the big combo. And I mean, 3-0 to Fuselet there. Well played. Well played to both of our players, right? But again, like I was saying earlier, uh, Gabba sending Fuselet down to loser's side that early on in the bracket was, uh, that was, nobody in losers is happy about that one. He is going to be probably taking a good few names down here. Well played to both of our players. That is going to be Luca, unfortunately, eliminated from the bracket though. And Fuselet moving on in loser's side of top eight here. All right, we have our next side of uh, loser's side top eight here. We got even, yeah, even more Slugfest Gaming here. We got Quirk's Vassaraga now. We just watched Fuselet uh, cook there on his. Quirk now looking to uh, follow that act. And of course, we've also got Dragon of Montreal on the Sores here. So this is uh, this is quite the, the match here. You love to see it. Vassaraga Sores. This is uh, really, you know, anytime, anytime big boys get to stand across from each other and just stand and bang, it's, it's always a good time. Uh, I do Winner's Finals. Basically, we'll, yeah, we'll do Winner's Finals uh, right before Loser's Finals, basically, right? We got, we, well, I guess after this match, yeah, yeah. Maybe? I'll figure it out. I'll take a look. I haven't looked at the bracket. I don't know exactly where, how far along we are in losers, but yes. I think you still have at least uh, one or maybe one more match to go. In any case, you got uh, the match starting up here. Ooh, good, good job by Dragon again covering his toes there. Looks like uh, Quirk and, and uh, Fuselet both very active with that 2M in neutral, trying to sweep you and then go into the big steppers there for their big combos, right? So Dragon already bro blocking that low. It, it bodes well for the rest of his match experience here. Jumping the, the DP, not bad. But again, finds himself at a bit of a health disadvantage, though. Quirk, for their part, is low on Brave points. So, even though they have a big health advantage, it could all disappear very quickly, but very good spot dodge on the Raging Strike there. Not going to kill off of this, I don't think. No. You know, if they, if they had had 25%... Oh, no, it was combo limit. Never mind. I was going to say, if they had had 25% meter for a conversion, they might have killed, but that was combo limit. However, going to bonk... Uh, right there, going to bonk Dragon on the face and take that first round. Uh, after this one, we have one round of matches before Losers Finals. Uh, we might do Winners Finals after this then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, we'll see. I'll, 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 I'm a visual learner, okay? I'll take a look at the bracket and then I'll figure it out. I forget when I usually like to do it. 
In any case, uh, Quirk found, finds himself pushed into the corner early on here by Dragon. So where's this corner pressure? Can be, uh, it can be, it can be scary. But also, if you just if you stay patient and you just don't match from the plus frames, uh, you can you can just eat some chip and usually be somewhat okay. Depends on how well the Swords player is able to uh, mix up some shimmies, mix in some throws. Uh, let's let's say we're not. So let's say we're gonna do the the next round of, of losers matches first, and then we'll do winners finals afterwards. Okay, blast. I think that'll I think that'll that'll work out pretty well. All right. Anyways, sorry, we're figuring out some stuff with the bracket there, but Quirk, uh, very, very strong play from them. I couldn't, I wasn't talking about it as much as I probably should have been, but they, they take that first game over Dragon. It's okay. We got a lot more sets to play here. We've got. Uh, no, you're, you're good. You're good. You're good. I, I also, I, I could have chosen to uh, respond to chats now or later. It's fine. In any case, we got, we got lots of sets to play still. Here, right. At the very least, even if Quirk manages to 3-0 Dragon here, we got two more games to look at and analyze here. So let's see. Solid, uh, solid control of the neutral there with the the big scythe. Right. I actually didn't know was that was that was that on counter hit did that uh, convert into battalions. I wasn't I wasn't uh, certain. It looked like it did there, but I was pretty sure that that move does not do. That. It must be on counter hit. I mean, it's a pretty high attack level. If you are unfamiliar, uh, it was for some some technical nerd shit here. The higher the attack level of a move, it, it does more than determine just the uh, the clash properties of it. It also it get uh, higher attack level moves get more on counter hits than lower attack level moves. So that could be the reason as to why Kirk was able to convert the battalions of fear off that far off that far H there. In any case, ultimate uh, dash there is going to be safe on block. Suarez has one of those of his own. Let's see if uh, Montreal tries to bring it out. Nope. Goes for the ultimate rock smash instead there. The exploding volcano anime punch. And once again gets caught trying to catch, uh, trying to little stick out a little bit of a 2L there. Dash Quirk walking back, but it was out of range. Just gets monked on the head to their trouble by Vasaraga's big scythe. Nice uh, start there with the dash. Gets a counter but unfortunately no big conversion off of it. And he can't armor through command grabs, as we all know. That is... Oh, excuse me, sorry. I almost choked for a second there. That is one thing, right? We do know that uh, Dragon, he's very prone to wanting to fit in that armor in either it, on his defense or even on his offense, right? To try and catch the full match. Here. But uh, Quirk does have a command grab at their disposal there to potentially blow him up for it. And this is... Is this death? No, no. But they get the Soul Forge back up, and it's a very scary position if your name is Dragon of Montreal here. So let's see. Oh, anti-air command grab. Good wherewithal there. Good reactions to just scoop Sora's right out of the air there and go up 2-0 on Dragon. There is still one more set here at the very least. We are doing first to five, but Quirk definitely looking like they have a good idea of what to do in this matchup, and uh, Dragon's got to figure something out here, or they will be eliminated from brackets. That's plus on block there. If you let him charge up, that's still plus. I do like the staggering right now, and yeah, that one, so that time, did not... I, I like the idea there. It's sort of the uh, the fighting game rule of threes, as it were. Both, uh, both uh, the first two times, right? Do the big charge that loses to them mashing the button, and the third time, do the quick one that beats them mashing the button, right? That's exactly what Dragon did. Some fundamentally solid uh, offensive theory there, and it gets them a hit. Quirk does, however, find their way out of the corner, and oh my god. that If that isn't the battle of the big boys, I don't know what is. Armors through Sora's armor there, does Quirk. And we are actually seeing Sora's install. It's quite the rare sight here, but oh, are you blocking? You gotta be, because that is... Or sorry, are you jumping, rather? Because that is a guard break. Actually... What do you do about this? If you jump, it'll hit you too, don't you? Or is it, oh no, it's a command grab, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. If you don't, if you jump, it does lose. In any case, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the coolest skybound art in the entire game there, uh, which is of course Sora's, and good damage there and good everything for a Dragon. Now he finds himself. Wow, that is that is that uh, damage reduction from Sora's coming in handy. I was gonna say. Thoris gets a whole lot of damage reduction when he goes into install there, and he gets even more depending on how many stacks he has, right? And that's why that uh, those stompers from Vasa did almost nothing, but the command grab, of course, is uh, still going to do enough to get through it there. And Quirk now putting themselves on set points. It was a pretty good uh, use of the install there by Dragon, but not quite enough to take that round. Uh, now they're fighting for their lives, officially. If Quirk wins this, that'll be Dragon out of the tournament. And once again, man, Vasaragas, just, these Vasaragas have been so on point with just absolutely creasing people's Jordans, man, stepping on their toes and blowing them up for it. So really, really good stuff from both Quirk and uh, Fuselite, who have both been using that 2M to really good effect. It's a slow button, right? You'd think it's nine frames, but they have really been rocking with it. Ooh, and there you go. Punches the ZP there. Gets a nice little Raging Strike conversion there. Hit confirm in a can, as it were. Gets the Soul Forge back up, and you're... Oh my god, it is a very spooky situation now if your name is Dragon of Montreal. And the Command Grab, that light one, is in fact a true mix. It's not reactable. That is unseeable, so... Dragon gonna be getting thrown for their trouble there, and unfortunately, getting eliminated from the tournament by Quirk. But I mean, very well played, very good. We watched a couple of Dragon sets on uh, on on the video this time. They did very well, I think, so... But Quirk has just been, uh, Quirk's just been honestly looking really, really strong in this tournament so far. So very well played to both of our players. But that is going to be Quirk moving on. Wait. All right, and here's our next match of uh, Losers Top 8 here. We've got uh, Call Me The Bank, aka Hostile, versus Fuselet on the Vasaraga. So let's see. He's not playing, uh, so Hostile has, has shown us that he's got an Able in his pocket, right? But I suppose he, uh, he figured, he, one, maybe he didn't want to hear me keep talking shit about the character every time he pulled it out. But also, 
Uh, Boss Raga, we have seen Fusel especially, he can have Boss Raga do some real big deeps whenever he touches you here, so maybe he was uh, feeling not so confident in getting too touched there on the Able. In any case, he is playing the Belial, that is plus on block. You gotta either 2 eight that, or air throw him or something on the way down. Or it'll be another turn there for Belial. Ooh, command grab. You never see it coming. You got absolutely schmicks for your trouble there. Armors two of the battalions. This is uh, looking like a pretty solid round from Fuselet so far here. So let's see what uh, Hostel can figure out. Command grab versus command grab, but my command grab is blue and starts up faster. So that's going to be big damage for you. You see what Fuselet was doing there, right, with the steppers. He was trying to, each one of those does a little bit of chip damage, right? He was trying to chip out Hostile, but they threw him in between the steppers. Right in time there, and oh my god, he is just standing there menacingly, charging up that EX Battalions for like a, a second and a half. Hostile flinched, unfortunately, and, and Fuselet blew him up for it, taking that first round. Well played, well played. Okay, armor's through. I was gonna say, is he, is he gonna get conversion off of this? But no, that is uh, not what happened. I, I would have believed it, honestly. Fuselet has been getting conversion off of so many random things, I didn't know he could. Good by Vaith there. By Hostile, though, to call him out. Get some pressure going here. That plus on block 2M. Every Belial sings that thing's praises, and it is such a good normal. Nice command grab there, too. Okay, I like this, I like this. You got some, some serious pressure going on. Fuse with though. Showing a lot of patience on defense, and once again, I keep talking about it. This is, it's like the story of this tournament, I feel like. These boss Rockets are just absolutely blowing people's toes up with that uh, 2M button there in, in a big way. He's trying it again. Look at him, the madman. He just wants to keep doing it. Boss Rocket players only want one thing, and it's disgusting. All they want is 2M. All right, very nice here by Hostile. It's going to be potentially putting... Uh, if if Fusel gets hit by one more thing, he could be dead here. Oh, but now chip damage. What are you going to do? The steppers. I was talking about it earlier, right? We, we, we brought it up where Fusel was trying to chip him out with the steppers there. They are special moves. They do do chip damage. And if you have, and if you do block them, they will kill you if you are on chip, uh, if you are on chip distance there. So Fuselet, smart situational awareness there to, to chip him out with those steppers and take that first game. Uh, Vosrock's 2M is 9 frames. So it's a pretty slow low. But considering the fact that it leads to a full combo, I guess it's not so bad. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. It feels so fast. I mean, I guess, yeah, like for something again that leads into, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's pretty slow. It's pretty slow. I don't know what to say. It is just, it's pretty, pretty confirmed, confirmedly a pretty slow normal, but I suppose it's got some decent range on it. He, he does stick out his foot, his big old draft foot there pretty far, but in any case, oh, nice. I was going to say, uh, hostile finding himself pushing to the corner there, but does the ultimate parry, uh, fuse it, maybe not keeping track of the meter expenditure there, did not realize it was a command grab and, uh, gets blown up right out of his wreck for his trouble. Any Avatar Blau enjoyers? I got bad news for you. So uh, I've been accused of being a professional Avatar Belial hater. But anyways, uh, I'm not a hater. I'm not. I wanted to be. I just wanted to be better. I wanted to be better. Anyway, Fuzo taking that first round. Very well done by them. Hostile, of course, putting up a good fight here. But again, Fuzo is just uh, pretty solid in a lot of these different aspects of the game. Obviously, an en encyclopedic knowledge of this Vasaraga character coming out of him too. So he's doing things that uh, maybe you aren't so used to, right? It's very rare that you even find any kind of Fuselet or Fuselet, any kind of Vasaraga players whatsoever, let alone one of the strongest Fuselet here. So getting this this level of Vasaraga match experience is pretty uh, pretty hard. But Hostile's doing a good job still so far. Let's see. He's uh, definitely looking out for the ultimate command grab here. Doesn't get blown up by the armored move there. That's good. This DP is going to be bad news though. Oh, and the 2M once again. Doing absolutely everything for a Fuselet right now, using it to extremely great effect. Oh man, okay. Well, that's 2-0 uh, oh, there. Ooh, maybe a character switch coming out for uh, for Hostile here. Looks like he's going to switch to the Avatar Belial. Surely this will go just fine. I don't see how anything could go wrong here. Avatar Belial versus Vasaraga. I don't see why not. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's a bad matchup, right? Maybe maybe uh, the laser is or something is really hard for Boss to deal with. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Watch him win now. Reverse sweep incoming. Well, I mean, folks, uh, you, you gotta you gotta give uh, Hostile your your energy here. I need those spear bomb gifts in chat. He, uh, Playing Avatar Blau versus Fuselet, he is uh, he, he needs it. Okay, so please share your energy with him. Oh my God, the double stomp! Hold on, hold on. This character's top one. Never mind. Never mind. Avatar is actually the best character in the game. That's my bad. I was wrong this whole time. April second, Abel will surely be top tier. He already is. Look, look at that. He's got a DP that hurts him as much as hurts his opponent. He's already top. He's already fucking top tier. What are you talking about? All right, nice conversion here by Hostile going into the raging strike. Good, good, I mean, good chunk of damage there. No, don't get it twisted. That is pretty nice stuff. Oh, but he's in... Oh, oh he's, he puts himself in chip distance now. It's very scary, and... How's this gonna work? Which Who wins here? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure that, that Vasaraga wins here, because he's, in, he's like, uh, invincible for longer. And, uh, unfortunately, that is exactly how that goes down. This character is cooked. <laughs> listen, listen. Wait, it's enough It's enough able hatred, okay? We're, we're here to support him now. He's the underdog here. That's little Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, okay. Stomp on, stomp on his big uh, draft head there. I like it. Oh, no, but gets armored through for his trouble. And he gets a conversion off of that because of the air hit. And oh, look at what... Where is his health? Where did his health go? Where did his health go? Oh, my God. Oh, this time, I don't think Fusil's ready for this one, though. Nice. Okay. Makes him shit his pants. We gotta get at least one of these in every tournament. That is the one thing about Avatar Belial. No other character can make you shit your pants with that brown note quite as well as he can, so... That is, uh, I, I will always, he will always have a special place in my heart for that reason. Okay, the double gym does not, uh, does not work out there for him. Oh no, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure Vosraga's Light Rekka is going to reach from here. He does have a pretty big hitbox on that one. And, okay, armor's right through, but hold on! That is going to be, you know what, this is going better than the Belial so far, so never mind. Avatar Belial, on stream, confirmed better than a regular Belial. He feels the power that could tear him to shreds, and he becomes a top one character. You'll have to see it, you'll have to see it. Let's see what uh, Hoss can cook up here. Nice little air unblockable there with the double gen. Love to see it. Oh, oh my god, and the multi-hit dive kick. Hold on. Going right through Fuselet's armor. He's cooking? Let him cook? Oh, no. But he spent so much of the round winning. What do you mean he's out of health disadvantage? Oh, god. Oh, god. Oh, no. It's oh, god. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. I mean, Avatar does have a lot of uh, multi-hits. That is true, right? So he does have a, he does have a lot of uh, possible options to potentially get through Basaraga's armor there. See, I, know, I know that Hostile wants to make him shit his pants. What's the option? Ooh. Was a little bit scared there, I think, to try the command grab because what happened with the with the, uh, the the clash of the grabs last time? But that is going to be Fuselet going up 3-0 there, unfortunately, over Hostile. Very well played, honestly. That Avatar, you know what? Yeah, I I, I maybe hit him with the commentary's curse a little bit. It's fine, but the Avatar was kind of cooking. The Avatar was kind of cooking there. Very good stuff from uh, Hostile there. But Fuselet, of course, going to be moving on now, and Hostile, unfortunately. Uh, Eliminated from brackets. So, I right, got even more Vasaraga action coming your way here. The Vasaragas are definitely the story of this loser side of the top eight. So, we've got Council, once again, got uh, sent down here, I believe, by Gabagul and uh, Quirk on their Vasaraga, too. So, let's see. Uh, Cagliostro, Vasaraga, I have to imagine, can be a little bit tough for Vasaraga. I'm not, I'm saying that mostly just because Vasaraga is a big body and uh, Cagliostro is also, uh, you know, he, he tends to be pretty good against a lot of these big bodies. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. It's a good start so far for Council. Getting some good corner pressure here, pushing Quirk all the way to the other side of the screen. It's right where you want them, as it were. Kind of, uh, yeah, being patient here, though, right? Yeah, Quirk, uh, Council's not just going in necessarily and just trying to run in and mix them, right? They're, uh, they're sitting there and they're just kind of spacing themselves out and picking their shots. It's working out pretty well. Okay, Rekka, big steppers coming in. Wants to move, teleports to him. That's so, this is, this is one thing that I think could make this uh, matchup very problematic for Boss here, right? Is, uh, so for some reason, Vasaraga, when he's in... Is he dead, by the way? No, okay. Not quite yet. When Vasaraga is in his uh, big steppers there, I like to call it. Yeah, exactly. He does not side switch for some reason. I don't know why, but but he doesn't. Which means Cagliostro, who has a free cross-up teleport there, this uh, the steppers move from Vas there just, like, doesn't work. I mean, like, not that it doesn't work, but Cagliostro has a very, very easy answer to it, necessarily, right? So, I gotta imagine this is gonna be kind of tough here uh, for Quirk. We'll have to see. U trap, big scary times, gets back thrown right into it. That's something you gotta always worry about, right? When Cag got trapped, when Cag has her traps up like that, her throw gets so much scarier because you can actually combo off of it in a big way. Gets the counter hit 6 6 L there. And oh my god, I was gonna say, is he gonna get the ability to get a full con conversion into kill here? And the uh, EX hip thrust there, as I like to call it, is in fact going to be more than enough there for Council to take that first game over Quirk. I gotta take a sip of water here. I'm getting, I'm getting dry mouthed all over the place. Big old 2H there, the big steppers, once again, following up. Grab a ghoul, indeed. Oh, nice. Take, gets rid of the trap there. That's another thing, too, right? His boss does not have any really quick... Uh, he does not have very many quick lows, right? So I feel like it's going to be hard for him to get rid of that trap from Cagliostro there. 2M is, is pretty pretty committal in terms of an option. So, hey, 2M has been doing everything for these boss ragas so far. Maybe it can also help work through this matchup here and through these traps. It is 1-0 uh, council right now. Getting ultimate pierce for the trouble there. Oh no, this is bad. Okay, but no, no full conversion off the U trap there. It's right there. It's, it, the threat of it is always right there, but actually never, it never did anything. Sometimes the threat of a move is better than the actual move. You know how it is. Uh, okay, no, no full conversion off of that, but kind of in trouble is Quirk, I say, as they command grab their way right out of there. Okay, the big steppers. I, I like the idea with the U there. It has infinite armor, right? So there's nothing. Oh no, there's nothing that Council could do to break that armor there, but unfortunately. Uh, gonna be kind of caught in a rock in a hard place there with that U, uh, that U trap. It's gonna be Council going up one more round here in the set. 
Spiris. That's okay, okay, hold on. Doesn't doesn't get fully sent into the trap, so that's good. If the Spiris hit you and there's not a trap there for cats to convert off of, it's really not even that bad of a move. It does like a little bit of damage here. Especially for someone like Boss Rago, where you got so much HP, right, to just uh, tank some of those Spiris every now and then. As you work your way through the neutral, and I like the idea, but what? Why was that uh, why was that such a bad uh, conversion there? Like why why was it so hard for them to actually get the 2M there? Was it because Kagiosha was airborne when they did it? Maybe? Maybe. It feels like most of the time, uh, Vostar gets a much easier conversion off that uh, that U dash there, and oh no. Unfortunately, even though Council did that, started that spot dodge up very early, this is death, by the way, they're absolutely going to reduce atoms, but even though Council started that spot dodge up almost preemptively, spot dodge is basically the, the numbers on spot dodge are designed with the express purpose of uh, killing Raging Strike, right? Spot dodge has 29 active frames, Raging Strike has 28 startup frames, so uh, it is it is purposefully designed to always just fit in there and still be invulnerable when Raging Strike goes off. So it's going to be Council taking that second game on Quirk there. Let's see, some good corner, corner pressure to start this round also. Looking good for them so far. Nice sweep there once again. All these Vassaragas, man, they just want to get people's legs out from under them and that's when they can really start playing their game plan. So, oh my god, but... Vassaragas 2H is pure hoopy butthole, unfortunately. Not even close to catching that cross-up teleport as it happens. Uh, and that is going to be Council taking another round here. Putting himself, I believe, on set point. So let's see what Quirk can do here to stay alive, potentially. Oh, okay. I was going to say bad start, but doesn't get Pierce into the trap at least, so that's not so bad. Kind of back and forth in neutral here. Okay. Guess their, their legs swept out from under them. That's pretty good for Quirk. Gives him a chance here, but again... Just like the throws, when Tag has those traps set up, every little hit that she can get can become so scary, right? Because, for example, off that overhead, she might normally get nothing. But with the traps there, she uh, does, in fact, get a little bit of a combo, some big, some big damage there on Quirk. I like the command grab, though. Hold on. This isn't so bad. It's, it's, it's winnable. Right? Armor's through the trap there. I like the idea. I like the idea. Okay, they're not dead here. They are Boss Raga. They got a lot of health to work with. But now things are starting to look very scary. Nice side switch combo there from Council. Ultimate trap. This is the Mind Killer. The Mind Virus. Ooh, okay, hold on. Very good hit conversion there. Once again, whenever, whenever you get kind of a weird uh, hit on, at any point on the screen, you can always just Raging Strike. Get a little bit of a hit conversion in, in a can there, and I love the weight on Battalions. That was so smart, because I believe Battalions is air unblockable. So that was a very smart idea by Quirk there. They saw Council go airborne. They just said, I'm just going to sit here until you fall right into my loving shoulder. That is a very solid round they end up taking there. But let's see. They got a long road ahead of them if they want to take this uh, set back here against Council. Oh, that's not going to be a good start. Getting pushed right into that trap there is a bad time to be alive. Doesn't fall to the teleport, but does get grabbed for the trouble. Okay, okay, hold on. Booty bomb. Okay, at least at least that got them out of the corner. That's something. That is something. Might have whiffed on their ultimate dash there, but again... Oh, nice. Armor through the DP there, but now Closey uh, going slowly back into the corner. And spot dodge, I believe, is what, just, is what Council just did there. Beat that ultimate dash. Good stuff by them. Blocks the overhead. Does quirk. But I believe... Are they dead? No, no, I don't think so. Because if, if, if they had more meter for Raging Chain conversions, they would have been. But, that's the scary thing about Kag, man. Her throw bait is so scary that delay tech can get to be pretty uh, problematic. So you, sometimes you just do just end up letting her uh, walk up and throw you. Very well played stuff by Council there. And by Quirk as well. But, that is going to be one of our Vassaragos. Taken out of bracket, unfortunately, as Quirk is eliminated and Council moves on. Well played, well played to both the players there. You are both great. All right, now we have our winner's finals here of our top eight. It's going to be Gabagool versus Blast Timber right there. Yeah, I'd lose is uh, Blast Timber's tag. Let's see if it holds true, but this will be an interesting one. Of course, Blast and Onre in general. Like I say, a lot of value off this parry. And of course, Sadiva has a very nice baked-in answer to parry in the form of uh, of Command Grab, of course. Uh, Gab was trying to headbutt some of these Spear Thrusts, and it does not seem to be working for him so far. So, with the attack there, and just goes for the ultimate clothesline. Ladiva, Ladiva Headbutt, if you did not know, does have anti-projectile properties, and it gives her some meter for headbutting them too, but it seems Onre's Spear Thrust, either the timing is hard, or maybe there's something weird about it that makes it, ooh, not so good to headbutt. Blast getting scooped right out of the air there by Gabba. Tries to bait a Brave Counter there with the uh, meaty 5H into the spot dodge, but Blast does not bite. Good patience there by Blast, not being so jumpy on defense. The parry follow-ups, though, from Onre do always go off, regardless of what you do. And he gets hit with the content button, not like this. Not the content button, that's a tough time to be alive. Gabba with that 5 view doing some mischievous shit right there. And it pays off in a big way as it gives him his first round there over Blast Amber. Okay. Oh, there's, there you go, the parry actually working out in Blast's favor that time. Got some nice corner pressure on, on Ladiva. You'd have to imagine, in theory, this matchup is probably not so bad for Andre, right? 
but then it's just, uh, you know, his main defensive option is kind of neutered by Ladiva. So we talk a lot about how Ladiva, no matter what the matchup is, no matter how bad it is, if he can get you in the corner, it's kind of over, right? If he has a chance, no matter who you are. Against characters whose main defensive option is a parry, like on right here, it goes that goes doubly so. So Blast has definitely got to make sure that he keeps Gabagool in the corner here as long as he can. And as I say that, the commentator's curse. Gaba fights his way out, getting the full corner to corner here with the optimal uh, combo there for uh, the corner carry and some damage with that 6-6-L after the headbutts. All right. Ooh. Why did that Why did that, uh, Why did did that? that not combo there? Gaba just didn't hit the button fast enough, possibly. But regardless, well, once again, those parry follow-ups from Andre go off regardless. Does not get a punish, though. Does Gaba cool. And Blast now in a pretty good spot. Yeah, I was going to say. Any sort of little uh, love tap here in neutral will probably do it for him. That rating strike conversion is going to tie this up one round apiece. It's a big statement here to go one up in winners finals, and of course the winner of winners finals has a basically you can say is the favorite to win the entire tournament, right? It is so hard to like grand finals is just such a tall ask for the person coming in from loser side, right? You have to win two sets against the person who has not dropped the sets the entire tournament thus far. So both of these guys definitely going to be wanting to get in on winners side of that grand finals, and I like the setup there from Gab. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. I don't do that myself, but it definitely looks like it works in one way or another. In any case, blasts pretty uh, pretty rough round for him so far. Almost at death's door already. Gabba full health, so even if he does some zoning, he's got a long way to go. Or he can surfboard right into Gabba's loving arms there. As that light SPD is going to close things out this first game, at least here, for in Gabba's favor. And the match ended. What's uh what's that one about? Did the room explode or something? Of course, how could I be so naive? I forgot. Blast has a Zeta. And he's also very good with, and he pulls it out every now and then, and he has decided, you know what? Onre, I don't like it, I'm not feeling it. Zeta, I'm gonna go instead. And you know what, the thing about Zeta, we're talking about how Onre maybe is a good matchup, right, into into Lidiho, but like he, has, he, re he relies on a parry, and that could be very bad for him if uh, Lidiho gets him in the corner. Of course, Zeta is a very similar idea, right? Zeta, Zeta, her main defensive option is also a parry, but the big thing with Zeta that you have to remember, oh my god, what, a, what an air grab. The big thing with Zeta that you have to remember, right? is uh, that if she guesses Ladiva's command grab, Ladiva turns into Adams, right? Because if Zeta guesses your command grab, she jumps and she does the little uh, air Blanca ball there to blow you up, you take absolutely massive damage. So in that sense, I would say this matchup, at least in that sense, is very favored for Zeta. But Gabba says, fuck your matchup charts. I'm just going to go in, I'm going to grab, I'm going to beat I'm gonna be beat people up. I'm going to try and go up 2-0 here in the set if I can. Let's see. What the hell? Round start clothesline. That's got to be a misimpeded SPD if I ever did see one. Though, you know what? Gabba does seem to be doing the simple SPDs most of the time, so maybe that was intentional. Maybe, maybe he's just an absolute madman. I, I could see it. It's a much better start to the round here for Blast. Get some early corner pressure in on uh, Gabba here. Like him spacing it out, right? Just trying to find a space where he can interact with his spear and Ladiva can't with her relatively poor neutral tools. I like it. I like it. He's not just running up and trying to smother him. He's trying to keep him there. Keep him in the corner, right? The worst thing you can do when someone's in the corner is let them out, right? Which is un unfortunately what uh, happened just then. But uh, I like I like Blast's general idea with his corner pressure there. However, empty jump command grab from Gabba there. The, the grappler special, and then he mixes it up on the second time. What a time to be alive! Oh my God! I was gonna say sorry. I took a sip there real quick, but Gabba showing some very uh, strong offense here, rotating his options, and calls hard, calls out the jump back ultimate ball there from Zoe with ultimate headbutt of all things. That is some disgusting shit that we just saw from Gabagool there. Really strong matchup knowledge, I suppose. I, 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 I wouldn't even have thought of that, to be honest, but goddamn. All right, well, Blast is in a, in a tough scenario here. At this point, uh, he obviously is still winnable. He can always do things. He never uh, never give up, as it is. But um, it is it is pretty tough to come back from uh, from 2-0 here. Reverse sweep is possible, but it's tough stuff. So it's a good start to the round here. He's got Gabba in the corner still. So if he's going to, you know, again, the, the journey of a 1,000 reverse 3 0 starts with a single bit of corner offense. So we'll have to see. Gabba sneaking out there with ultimate clothesline, though. Now suddenly this is pretty scary. Four blast once again, except, hold on. He gets a nice little tick there into, uh, into the Raging Strike for a nice hit conversion in the can. Gotta put Bahamut Versa on for the Grand Finals music. It is, it is quite the, uh, it's quite the, 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 I don't think it's available though in the jukebox in the game, right? You can put like Zen Rise or something on, possibly. In any case, ooh, Gabba on chip here. Blast possibly, oh my god, I was gonna say Blast maybe respecting Gabba's reversal options too much there. Didn't go for the chip with the spear, but works out for him regardless. I do like the idea of, uh, of him just going back there and, uh, getting, being able to chip. Oh my god. He able to ship uh, Gabba from a safe distance there. So well played by Blast, but now finds himself once again in the Ladiva Blender here, which is never where you want to be. Let's see. Oh, and the counter hit 5H, like the shimmy there from Gabba. 
to catch Blast sort of hitting a button or anything like that. And the counter at 5 is going to be big damage. Oh. Blast, uh, Gabba, the Gabba not finishing that combo off. Not sure what happened there, but still in a pretty advantageous position. I say that, though. Raw, raw ultimate specials from Zeta like this is one of the ways they can definitely start to come back in this round. Back throws Gabba out of the corner there, but rolls right back, trying to hit him with the Brain Destroyer. Does not quite work. Gabba does tech it, but... Blast, still in a, in a decent position here. Has the screen advantage at the very least. Has to look out for some potential, maybe a reversal super or a headbutt or something like that from Gabba, but I like him slowing down. We, we see him blast this a couple of times, right? He slows down the pace of the match. He just kind of stands in a position where his character is comfortable and the, his opponent's character isn't. And that was... Oh my god, I was gonna say that was such a well-baited super skybound dart, but unfortunately, the air Blanca ball there is just going to whiff clean. If he had just landed with a jump or uh, any sort of jump normal right there, he actually would have gotten the kill. That is so unfortunate. Poor Blast, but he's got not he's got not, 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 not let that get to his head or uh, get, you know, get to him too much. He's got to put it behind him and just try and uh, win this last round here because Gabba now finds himself on set point here to potentially send Blast down to loser's side here. It's going to be pretty dangerous. You're in the corner against Lodiva. Medium headbutt there, plus two on block. Okay. Unfortunately, whiffs the ultimate uh, skill there. Now uh, Zeta without her meter. It's a lot less scary and neutral here. And Gabba command grabs him on the way in. A hard call out there. And that parry gets crushed. The parry follow-up getting crushed by 6-6-H. I was not aware that, that was an interaction, but apparently it is. Goddamn. Unfortunate stuff left and right happening for Blast here. But, oh, and that's projectile invulnerable. Well done by Gabba there. That, that Super Bio Diva is projectile invuln. So he charges right through the laser and punches Blast in the face there. That is going to be Blast. Getting dropped down to the other side of the bracket, right? Still in this, still in this, but that's going to be Gabba moving on to Grand Finals on Winner's Side. So that is going to be a massive advantage for Gabba, probably cementing himself as the favorite now to win the tournament what just happened there. And Blast is going to have to fight for his chance to get some revenge upcoming here. Well done to both of our players. Alrighty, okay, we're back here with our loser side of top eight. So we're getting to the into the finals of things here. This is the the winner of this Ghost Losers Finals to fight Blast, and the winner of that is then going to try and get another shot at Gabagool here. So we'll have to see who can pull it out. But right now, we got Fuselet versus Council. Both of these players have looked incredibly strong throughout the bracket so far. But Fuselet, once again, just making that two M look as infinite distance. He's just so good at catching out people's toes with that shit, man. He's been doing it to an extremely strong effect throughout this entire bracket. Gets his ultimate projectile jumped by Council, though. Hold on. All right. No one with a huge advantage in the round so far, though, again. Uh, oh, my God. Trying to bait a break counter out there and gets uh, gets toilet taxed for his trouble. Low sweep there. Fuselet is king of the lows right now. Okay. Punches the teleport out there. The big steppers. Good patience from Council. But yeah, that light that Boss Rocket has there is so fast on whiff. It's actually pretty hard to actually to punish there. Okay, okay, okay. Good uh, good defense here from Fuselet, not getting caught out by anything. Ultimate DP to get himself out of the corner there. That was very solidly played to escape that offense there from Council. Beerus, not going to lead to anything right just now. Oh my god, but jumps the command grab, I think. Oh, maybe not. I was going to say, I think that uh, Fuselet is dead here. But Council goes to the rating check extension instead, maybe not trusting in the super skybound dart there to kill. Also that it wouldn't have. So they would definitely know better than I would. Oh my god, and now Count Fuselet finds himself on ship here. It's a scary time to be alive, and that is going to be... I, I got the spot dodge there, basically. There was too many plus frames to actually get out of the way of that, so... That's going to be Council taking that first round. Very, very good awareness there to hold uh, Fuselet in place first, and then hit them with the ship move. All right, Battalions of Fear, you know how it would be. Another one. Oh my... Now Fuselet finding himself with some advantageous core position here, but you got to be careful. And we talked about this in uh, when Council was fighting Quirk, right? But uh, Cagliostro has a really good answer to the steppers there, potentially. They just teleport to the other side, though. Right now, Fuselet not even giving them the chance, necessarily, as they are just relentless with this corner offense. Okay. Big, big advantage here from Fuselet, still in terms of health, and I think this is going to kill. Indeed it will. Tied up 1-1 in rounds here. Both uh, both rounds back-to-back. -back. Both players are looking very strong in the rounds they won, so let's see who can, who can adapt a little bit more. Okay. Oh, actually catches her out with the 2H there. Good patience. If Fuselet hit that button too early, it definitely wouldn't work. So, solid knowledge there of how to deal with that tool from Fuselet. All right, that is minus. Oh my god. And you know what? I like the DP there from Fuselet, but actually if he hadn't, that uh, EX hip thrust there from Council, I believe, would have been straight punishable. I don't know if it would have been punishable by 2M though. So. Okay, Battalion of Fear once again. Getting so much value out of this is Fuselet, and the Command Grab's not going to kill it just yet, but now an incredibly advantageous position, and wait. Oh, that was oh, that was Air Command Grab. God damn. Okay, I was like, what, 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 do you, what do you do there? I was so fast. But yeah, Fuse 
Very, very good, uh, very good option selection there. God damn. Take that first game over Council. Let's see. He wants that run back. Gabba is waiting for him in Grand Finals. The person who sent him down to losers pretty early on in the tournament here, so he does not want to, uh, he, he wants, he wants his revenge. And he is on the way right now. Yeah, throw there by Council, the correct option when you're so close there, when people are, are, are clashing, right? Only loses to basically DPs or supers, so that is the fastest option in, uh, in the game. Otherwise. Oh my god, and 6-6-H six, is six him right out of the toilet there. Very strong stuff by Fuselet. Has just been, oh, yeah, oh my god, wait, that hits. Well, what do you know? What do you know? I, here we were all yapping about how goddamn uh, Kaliosos teleport just kind of infinite, instantly beats Vasaraga's steppers there, and Fuselet said, nah, you guys just don't know the character like I do. So he said, uh, actually, you apparently hits on both sides there, and Cactus Council out. I don't know if Council, uh, if Council knew that, but I definitely didn't. We both know now, though. That side swap is not quite as free as I thought it was. Well, okay, okay, and that's very minus. Hold on. Counter hit uh, close L there into a bit of a conversion for Fuselet here into the command grab. I like the reset there. Getting some big damage off of that. Council about down to half health now. Battalion of Fear right through the Pierce. This counter hit 6-6L six, six is going to lead to even more damage. I don't think that Council's dead. No, wait, they are, aren't they? Oh, no, okay, no, they're not, they're not, they're not. I was like, the damage was really racking up there. Oh, but yeah, that's more so what I expected to happen every time that, uh, oh, no. Every time the Council teleported to the other side of, of battalions there or... Uh, Ouchie. Savage Rampage, I think is the technical term for it. I just call it the Big Steppers, but yes. Well done, stuff Off the uh, teleport into the throw, into the U-trap there. The Seal Council, that's second round. And let's see what they can do to potentially try and get back up to 1-1 in the set here. Oh my god, their, their feet's getting taken out from under them by Fuselet once again. It's going to be a yeah, big damage into Soul Forge here. And another meaty hit there from Fuselet. Big damage coming out. Now one more touch will be the end of Council here if they're not careful. Runs up and throws. Just like that. Doesn't get caught up by the ultimate teleport. By the teleport, uses DP to get out of that option. Very strong and steps on her, creases her Jordans right now. You just end that there, those fuse it. Catches a jump, I think, from uh, Council there. Trying to jump out of a command grab, possibly, but that is 2-0 now for Fuselet. Looking very, very strong in this matchup so far. Fuselet, I mean, Fuselet's been looking very, very strong in every single match that we've seen him, but so is Council. So let's see. Council's got a long road ahead of them at this point now if they want to reverse 3-0 Fuselet. So they're going to have to figure something out here. Oh my god, and two H's, so you can. Okay, I was I was curious about this. This is something that I was trying to tr uh, try out on ranked, and I actually couldn't figure it out. I couldn't uh, get a chance to test it in time. But I was curious if you could 2H uh, Kageostro between the hits of her uh, her medium air teleport there. And that's exactly what Fusel did, so he gave me some matchup knowledge right there that I can apply for myself. In the meantime, he also beat the ever-living hell out of Council and put himself on set point here. This is elimination point for Council. You know for a fact they want to move on further here and get their revenge on some of the people who were, uh, you know, sent, sent them to losers earlier on. So... Let's see if they can stay alive. Fuse is coming for you. Fuse is pissed. You sent... Uh, Gaba Gol sent Fuse to losers early on in the bracket. Like, winners round three or something like that. And ever since then, Fuse has just been this absolute steam train. Tearing through everything in his way. Coming all the way from the goddamn moon to beat Gaba's ass up. But he's not he's not quite through yet. He still has to beat Council here, though he is on set points. And then he's still got to go through Blast Hammer too. Who just, just equally as much wants that revenge on Gaba Gol there. It's a good start for this round, though. Corner pressure here. Low on brave points, though. Nice command grab. Council in some danger. Fuse what's feeling the vibes. Oh my god, air command grabs him out of the teleport. God damn. Oh, but the, the DP, they're going to get blocked or jumped over. And that's, I think, this, oh no, not going to be that for Fuselet. No. I'm not sure if that was Council accidentally dropping that combo. If there was something they could have done, but Fuselet in that scramble situation lands and immediately uh, capitalizes on it, creasing Council's Jordans there to eliminate them from the bracket. Very, very well played by both players, but Fuselet just unstoppable in this in this loser's bracket so far. God damn. Gabagool, he's coming for you, but he can't get there just yet. He does have to go through Blast Hammer first. So, Blast, by all means, get on in here and face the steam train, as it were. Yes, well played to Council, well played to Fuselet. Incredibly strong stuff from both players. All right, and we are here for our loser's finals now. We got uh, Fuselet, who has been on an absolute tear ever since Gabba sent him down to loser's side. Has not dropped a single game ever since he lost that set to Gabba. And it was a close one, too. It was 2-1. And, of course, we have Blast Hammer here, who just uh, got out of winner's finals there. Unfortunate loss to Gabba, and now has to face the steam train of vengeance that is Fuselet. So let's see what he can do. Nice, nice. Though I do I do love that, uh, that air EX dive kick there. It's a good start. Both of them kind of whiffing throws in each other's face there. Gets his toes uh, clapped out from under him. Again, that's been something that Fuselet has been very good at doing, but Bates a brave counter there. Very well done by Blast. 
That Reagan Strike is not going to work out for Fusel. He's going to take a big corner combo here for his trouble and be down one Brave Point to three. So, actually, this round looking pretty good for Blast. That is until his parry, his ultimate parry, gets command grabbed there by Fuselet. Now, looking to be at basically one touch distance from anything the Fuselet does. Let's see. Ooh, the Fearless just dashing to throw. I like it from Blast. Okay, got to deal with this next. Oh, and the Blade there, waiting out the active frames on the parry with the big steppers there. And now, you are in chip distance. What will you do? Unfortunately, you will die. That is a, that, that move is very difficult. Uh, that, that ultimate fireball there from Vasaraga has so many hits and so many active frames that I don't even know if you can spot dodge it, to be honest, but it's a, it's a very scary chip tool that Vasaraga has access to. And it is going to catch out Blast for the first round there. Okay, let's see. Battalions of Fear, once again, giving uh, Fuselip some much-needed screen space. Gets a big 2H there. Oh, actually, you know what? Misses the conversion. Doesn't get a whole lot off of that. Now, Blast finds himself in the corner. Scary times here. And just command grab for his trouble. Fuselet has been very good at rotating his options out of Rekka, making it very scary for your opponent to hit, the, hit a button there or try to do anything on the defense. But Blast was still in some invincibility after that hit stun was over there, so uh, Fuselet command grabs too early and is going to get blown up for his trouble there. Ultimate spin, right back in there, but ultimate move to ultimate move. The DP is always going to win, unfortunately. The big stepper is coming out of Fuselet and gets him with the anti air there, the lights follow up, and Battalions of Fear. Going to just absolutely chunk through everything that Blast was trying to do to keep him out there. As Fusic goes up 1-0 in the immediate rematch from both players, we are not messing around here. Alright. Good start to the round here from, from Fusic. Getting the first knockdown, getting his Soul Forge activated right away, and getting the corner position here a little bit on Blast. Oh, but a big whiff on the 5H there. Punished by Blast, but nothing, nothing huge in terms of the conversion there. Runs up and throws him once again. Okay, nice. Catches him in the trying to jump out of the corner there. Oh, but once again, this big, uh, this big armored dash from Vasaraga. We've talked about it. It gives him such a nasty conversion and so much damage. Now he's just got his soul forge back up too. Oh, okay. Jumps over the steppers there. Does blast. Well done. Forces uh, fuse it out of that Rekka earlier. Check how not quite gonna make it. Spear thrust, however, that shit's basically full screen. So Andre very comfortable at this distance fighting Vasaraga. Oh, but gets his toes clipped out from under him again. Hughes has been doing this to everybody today. Alright, ultimate projectile, ultimate spear thrust. Projectile's right back, says no soul forge for you, Monsieur. That's a lot of chip. That's like almost as much damage as the spear thrust just did, but once again, man, gets his toes sort of scooped out from under him there by Fuselet and gets stomped on for his troubles there. Fuselet looking very, very strong in this set so far. Let's see. Italians once he just he just, he's such a good neutral game plan with Vasaraga here. Very impressive stuff. Blast is gonna have to, to get uh, no, get to get something figured out here. Very most disrespectful back throw in the game, by the way. I would dare say, Blastar just picks you up and tosses you aside like you're garbage. He's a nice guy, but a lot of his moves are are really quite mean, huh? Oh my, and that's a conversion even off the non counter hit two H. God damn! I think is, is Blast dead. I did not expect this much damage off of a non counter hit two H starter, but yes. Bloody moon! Yeah, indeed. As Fuselet takes that second game there uh, once again. In pretty convincing fashion. I mean, Blast, he's got a he's got a tall order in front of him here. The size of Basaraga representing just the mountain that Fuselet is for everyone in this loser's bracket to try and climb. Is Blast going to be the one who do it? Who hurt Fuselet? Gabagool. Gabagool hurt Fuselet. He pissed him off. He sent him down to losers way too early. Now he's just, he's just he's taking it out on all of these other poor souls in loser's bracket here. Okay, that is plus on block there from Andre. I like to see it. Some good, some good pressure from Blast here. Maybe, maybe uh, respecting that ultimate DP from uh, Fuselet a little bit too much there. You can see him kind of trying to shimmy a whole bunch. But it has, it's worked out for him so far. Hasn't lost his corner position just yet. And unfortunately, as a as speak of the devil, that ultimate DP there. Fuse so good at finding the right time to put it, to get something out of it there. Oh, no. And once again, like we talked about, Andre's parry is very strong, especially his medium one can lead to a full combo. But the follow-ups from the parry happen regardless of whether or not he actually activates it uh, the way he wants to. So... It can lead to some very big punishes if you block it like Fuse just did, which is what happened right there. And this is going to be a big amount of chip for blocking this. Hold on. Oh, no. But he lands right into the loving arms there. That is one thing, right? Boss Rocket can time his DP in such a way that basically as soon as you land, he just grabs you for your trouble. That's going to be Fuse on set points here, trying to march these battalions of fear right into Gabagool's doorstep. Blast got a long road ahead of him here, but it's doable. It's doable. He just says, hey, he has to, yes, again, he has to let everything that's happened so far, he has to not let that get to him. Got to play this one round at a time, one interaction at a time. And try and reverse 3-0, this mountain of a man here. And he's, he's off to a good start. Basically a perfect so far in the, on the round, right? Good stuff. 
Got some corner pressure going here too, and actually does bait the throw there with the EX dive kick. Incredibly strong option there from Blast Timber. They go into this full super here. Fuselix, Fuselix are alive, but he's in danger. He's taking a lot of damage at this point. Okay, I think that is minus. Okay, DP. Honestly, if you're if you're Blast, you're not too upset about that either, right? I mean, he still he still basically got the screen position. He still got a big health advantage, but of course now with the command grab there, the screen position is now firmly in favor of Fuselix. Is this going to be? This isn't going to be death, is it? Surely not. Surely not. He's not dead, is he? He's not dead, is he? Oh, okay, no, no, it was combo. It, 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 didn't, it didn't even connect. God damn. It didn't even connect. Okay. Well, Blast finding himself with a second chance at life here, and really good option there to throw out the ultimate spear spin. God damn. Stopping Fuselet clean in his tracks. Very good stuff there from Blast to stay alive again, especially in such a high pressure situation here. You can really see that composure coming through on Blast Hammer's end. Ooh, and the Spear Thrust and the Battalions are going to clash there. Same attack level. I did not know that, but today I did learn. Oh, and gets Command Grabbed. Yeah, again, Fuse looks so scary with those Wreck Options, man. He rotates them so well. It's very difficult to realize, to, to, pick, an, to pick an option and feel safe doing it when he uh, goes into that stance there. All right. Good little... Oh, I was going to say good little pressure from Blast there. Slowly poking Fuse into the corner, but now, for his trouble, finds himself all the way in the corner. This is very scary. Fuse still on set point here. All right, all right, brave counter, get off me. I, I like it. Ooh, and nice. Does not get uh, hit on the way down there. In fact, it's a full corner combo here on Fuselit for his troubles. That's good. Fuselit brave counter, some clean off of him. Gets the soul forge going. This is scary stuff. Command grab. Blast still has a couple, a little bit of health in him. He can get grabbed one more time. In fact, and not die. But any any sort of strike combo that starts with a sweep from Fuselit here is going to be death for sure. And you can't spot dodge that one because there's two hits to it, and the command grab is going to go clean through the parry there. Unfortunately, very well played by Blast there, but Fuse, again, has just been an absolute train throughout this whole loser's bracket. He has not, again, since Gabba uh, sent him down, he has not dropped a single game. And now, through this, he has arrived at his revenge. Gabba Ghoul, get in here. All right, and we are here for Grand Finals. We've got Fuselet, who, once again, was sent down here by Gabba Ghoul. So Gabba Ghoul on winner's side of the bracket here, winning winner's finals. And uh, Fuselet, who was sent down by Gabagool and has since then not even dropped a single game on the loser side of the bracket. So, Fuse has been an absolute unstoppable train of violence so far in this tournament, trying to get all the way back to Gabba here and get his revenge. Let's see if he can uh, make it count. He's, he's gotten his chance. But, of course, he is now on the loser side of Grand Finals. You know what that means. He has to beat Gabagool twice here. Gabba looking very strong with this Ladiva. Has not dropped a single set in the entire tournament. So not only do you have to beat that guy once, you got to beat him twice. You got to at least, if you're Fuselit, six games you have to win here. You got a long road ahead of him, but if anyone can do it, Fuselit has been looking again just absolutely unstoppable on, our, on every video that we've, or every match we've seen on video here. So, okay, solid uh, immediate there. Catching Gabba's uh, toes out from under him after a whiffed light SPD. Ooh, but gets caught in the recovery of his far H there by an ultimate clothesline. Solid stuff by Gabba. Baits out the, or doesn't bait, more so jumps the ultimate DP there from Fuse as well. Let's see, let's see. Meaty 5H there, I like it. Oh my god, and grabs, command grabs him out of the command grab. Said, I'm the grappler here, you're not the grappler. And I think this is gonna kill. Yeah, I think it is. God damn, second hit does more damage than the first, you know how it is. Really strong start here by Gabagool. Clearly has a very solid idea of what to do in this matchup, right? You can see him beating a lot of uh, Fuselet's tools in ways that other people have not really so far. He hasn't been letting Fuselet get away with the same kind of stuff. And that staggered close L pressure, goddamn. Good stuff there. But Fuselet eventually finding his way out. However, that crossover jump U has been doing really big work for Gabba so far. Putting Fuselet firmly in the ground right now. Let's see. What's the option, Fuselet? You don't have, you don't have 50 meters, so it's going to be hard to get a reversal going. Now you do, but a command grab for your trouble, unfortunately. Gabba, uh, one, one very interesting thing about Gabagool, again, is he's doing those simple SPDs every time, but tries to hit Fuselet, of all people, with the content button there. However, he gets DP'd for his trouble. Fuselet spending the command grab there to send the message. Oh, and 623U, Madiva's anti-air command grab, looking as useless as always, unfortunately. Fails Gabba in a big way there, as Fuse is now the one with the corner pressure. Puts him in there, pulling him in the, you know, on the other side of the screen here. Command grab will kill, I believe, if Gabba gets hit by it, or he can just get his toes sniped out from under him as Fuse has been doing to every other person in this bracket so far. Battle three. Okay. Let's see, tied up one to one now. Oh, and the 2H there from Gabba. Very strong stuff, gonna be big damage on Fuselet here for daring to jump in neutral. 
It's the thing about this game, man. Look at this damn. People do not get anti-air combos like this in a lot of different games. But in these anime fighters, jumping can be a very scary sort of uh, proposition there. I notice, uh, oh my god, I noticed Gabba does not like working the crowds. Maybe gives him more time to set up some uh, some mind games on the wake up there. But in any case, looking very strong here, getting some pretty good, oh nice. Getting some good corner offense on Fuse here, but Fuse, uh, ultimate grabbing out of that ultimate clothesline there. Getting himself a little bit of room to breathe, a little bit of, uh, you know, screen space here. Getting himself out of the corner, nice roll through that option from Gabba Ghoul. Again, picking some very interesting options to beat these tools from Fuselet. Trying to go up 1-0 here. Okay. Scary situation for Fuse, of course. If he gets caught with an ultimate clothesline or something, he is just dead. Oh, I love the idea, though. Gabba trying to kind of cheese him out with the ultimate headbutt there, but of course, Command Grab is going to blow that up right in its tracks, but the Guard Crush has actually a true combo there. That Guard Crush, if you block that cl crouching from Ladiva, uh, she is plus five and you are Guard Crush, and that ultimate SPD is a five-frame startup. So, there's actually nothing, besides a Brave Counter there, there was nothing that Fusa could do, believe it or not. You have to Brave Counter that or just die in that situation. Very well played by Gabagool in that first game, going up 1-0 here. All right. And it's a, it's a good start to the second round here. I mean, it's the problem, right? We were talking earlier in the tournament. If Ladiva gets anyone in the corner, even if it's a bad matchup or someone who really blows her up in the in the corner here, she can still just beat anyone. But Vasaraga, a character with already pretty stinky defense, is going to struggle even more against this blender here. Oh, but once again, down to fear and it's taking, oh, taking Gabba's feet right out from under him. And spot dodge is the brave counter. Really good stuff there. Fuselet making a big comeback in this round so far. Now he's the one with the corner pressure and the health's almost even, but gets reversal supered. And with no brave points, that's going to kill with damage to spare from Gabagool there. Incredibly well played stuff. Up another round here, trying to go up 2 0 in the set. I mean, at this point, if you're up 2 0, it becomes such a monumental task for the person in loser side to beat to win, right? It's going to be their eighth game that they're going to have to play if they were to, they're going to have to reverse 6 0 you, basically. So let's see here. Good brave counter by Fuselet. Getting Gaba off of them there. Oh, but the spot dodge is going to lose command grab. Solid choice of options here. Both of these players are very familiar with each other's options of what to do to beat them. It's just can, yeah, can Fuselet get the download before Gaba gets a 3 0. Gaba could just, you know, he could he could beat him too fast. Let's see. Oh my god, they both try to brave counter there. But uh, he who raging strikes first wins. So that works out in Fuselet's favor pretty well here. Let's see. Some good patience from both players here on the command grab from Fuse. And that, I believe, is the first round Fuse has taken so far. But could this be the beginning? Could this be the beginning of a download from Fuse? In my experience fighting Fuse, like my very limited experience, he does have that gigabit internet. You might get him in the first round, but he, he figures shit out pretty quickly. Gabba, though, for his part, still definitely not uh, not getting gapped quite yet. Just running this corner offense on Fuse here. Oh, and you know what? Bates out the command grab. And I think, you know, I think, I think Fuse is dead here. It is Vasaraga, but I think he's dead. I believe so. Huh? Oh, the optimals. The uh, they, oh, never mind. It was gonna be up. Uh, it was gonna be in question. It was gonna be in question. But Gaba's got that optimal shit for those seven perfect letters to go up, or uh, seven golden letters rather to go up 2-0 here over Fuselet. That was a hell of a combo there, squeezing out every last bit of damage he could from that combo. Was Gaba Ghoul. Awesome stuff. And now Fuse is in a dangerous situation here. Gabba wins this game, he wins the entire tournament, makes himself your champion of the second ever open open skill wall brawl tournament here for the Discord server. So, once again, just getting so much value out of crossover jumping that uh, command grab into the JU, right, is, is Gabba Ghoul. Brings himself out of the corner, puts Fuse into the corner, and once, yeah, look at those, once again, the optimals coming out of there from Gabba. That is some serious damage coming out here. Fuse has got to figure something out quick. If he, goes, if, he, if he loses this round, that'll be set point, tournament points even, for Gabba Ghoul. Fuse is so menacing in that stance, though. You see even Gabagool respecting him a whole lot. When Fuse just goes into that stance, everyone knows he he does he does magical things with that that I have not seen from other people. So we'll have to we'll have to see if he can if he can parlay that into a comeback here in the set. Okay, uh, unfortunately the plus frames into the into the command grab there. Mind gamed out by Gabagool a little bit. A nice oh, he's got he's like, I got a command grab of my own and it does more damage than yours, dude. Because mine's an EX version, but that is projectile invincible. Very good stuff by Gaba there. Running right through that projectile, and now it's, oh, I was going to say, it's 50-50 it's for the tournament, and that's going to be Gaba taking it 3-0 over Fuselet. What an insane performance. Wait, no, I'm, I'm an idiot. There's one more. There's one more. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. There's one more. For some reason, I thought that was for the whole thing. Okay, Fuse, you got you got a chance here. You got a chance. I got a little too excited. I got a little too excited. One more. Fuse has got to get this. If he's if he's doing this download, Fuse has got to get this gigabit going right now, because uh, Gaba is on tournament point, and now he's in the Ladiva Blender. This is uh, this is not how you want, this is not how you want this to go. 
It's not how you want this to go. If your name is Fuselet, it's not how you want the round to start. But oh, tries to spot the Brave Counter and gets his toes taken out by Fuselet for his trouble. Hold on, hold on. Commentator's curse. Have I cursed Gabagool to getting reverse 6-0? It's possible. It's we'll have to see. Fuse, again, if anyone can do it, Fuselet has been absolutely unstoppable so far throughout this bracket. So uh, you got you got you gotta put a little bit of respect on the name. Six six games here is a big ask, but again, he's a big man. It is a big ask for a big boy, and at least for now, that is one round down. Again, the, the road to reverse 6-0 begins with a single ultimate tackle. So Fuselet looking pretty strong in that round there. Let's see. Let's see. Still tournament point for Gabagool here. Yeah, so still a very any any situation can become very scary for Fuse very quickly here. Oh, the two U at max range there from Gaba, getting the hard knockdown there. Not getting much off of it though, as Fuselet Brave counters him right off of him. Backs up there to beat the command grab. Solid stuff from Gaba. Fuselet, for his part, controlling the neutral with that big old scythe very well. Oh, well, 5 H whiffs. Hold on. It's not. It's looking pretty good here for Fuse, getting the corner pressure and getting the uh, sort of advantage in this round. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, and whiffs that. Oh, and takes his, his legs out from under him. I don't think this is death, but it's a, it's a really scary situation. If your name is Gabagool, headbutts him out. What's the... Oh, my God. And the 2M. Commentator's curse in progress. Does does feels what have that gigabit internet. Giving himself at least one more game here. At least one more game. This is... Uh, if you believe that Fuselet is the ultimate downloader, such as what the people in the chat are saying right now, then there could potentially... Be, uh, you know, giving him an ex giving himself at least one more game here. Give himself a lot more time to figure out what Gaba wants to do. But Gaba, don't get it twisted, right? Don't get it twisted. Gaba is still firmly the favorite to win this set right now. He he has to win. If he wins any game in this in this best of five right now, he will just win the whole tournament. And Fuse still has to win two straight sets here to actually take it over Gaba. Gets his brave counter baited though, and the Skybound arc to punish that. What in God's name? What in God's name? That is a the hardest call I've ever seen. As Gaba says, don't count me out. I ain't, you, you ain't downloaded shit. And puts himself back on tournament point here. Oh, but the clothesline gets ducked into the 2M. These players are just absolutely swinging at each other. You'd love to see it. That is minus on block there. So the counter hit there from Gaba into this optimal mid-screen combo here. You'd love to see it. Gets all the way over to the corner with Fuselet in tow. And the command grab. This is getting scary. Again, the, the Ladiva train of her own, right? If you are in the corner here, things can get real bad real fast. And the headbutt is going to beat out the ultimate projectile. And that is counter hit 5H. Oh, but doesn't get... So what Gabble is trying to do there is after counter hit 5H, they even get they can get another close H, but he was too far away there, so he got far H instead and got nothing off that conversion. That could have been for the whole tournament. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the full conversion, so now Fuselet is staying alive here. Got another chance at life in this round. Tries to get out a break counter. It doesn't work, but he just armors through the next one just fine. Fuse with the chance of his life here. Oh my god, I don't think this is going to work. I was going to say. We've seen this before. Uh, Boss Rock is invincible, does beat most invincibility on Skyburn Arts, blocks that overhead, does Gaba absolutely insane stuff, but Fuselet off of that unfortunate dropped counter hit combo from Gaba. Again, Gaba, if he had been able to get those two close H's, Fuselet almost certainly would have been dead. But Fuse, capitalizing on that mistake to bring himself all the way back in the set here. Fuse is just, he's, he's, the local man is too angry to die. And now he's got the advantage early on in this round, pushing Gaba to the corner here. Oh my god. Is he really gonna do this? Let's see. Oh my god, the whiff throw there. Spot dodged out. Oh no. I think that is going to be Gaba dying here. Fuse off of a heartbreaking missed conversion. Now it's 2 2. The set is tied 2 to 2 for both players. As Fuse it again, just absolutely refusing to go quietly into that good night. Let's see though. Gabagool again. He, he can't let it get to him, right? He, was, he literally was one pixel off of taking that game right there. If he, had, if he was close enough for that close H, he had the whole thing. He's got it in him. He just has to not let this uh, supposed comeback here from Fuse get to his head. We'll have to see. Fuse it, though, for his, for his part, playing very well and already starting off. Starting off very strong in this round here. All right, let's see. Oh, and command grab, and now seven golden letters coming out of Fuse it here. God damn. Officially, for the first time in the grand finals, ahead in the set count over Fuse it. Reset points now for Fuselet. Or sorry, over Gabagool. Fuselet ahead of Gabagool for the first time. Reset point now for Fuselet. Oh, counter hit 6-6-L though from Gaba. No no huge conversion off of it, unfortunately. Doesn't get the conversion off the clothesline there either. Spot dodge is the follow-up there off the Rekka from Gabagool. Gaba, oh, gets his ultimate DP jumped. And he's got one Brave Point. So it's going to be big damage, unfortunately. Let's see here. Takes out takes out Gaba's toes from under him again. Fuselet to just like a precision, like a goddamn sniper. With that 2M, it makes it look like it makes it look like it's the best normal in the whole goddamn game. It's, just, it's a guaranteed hit when Fuselet's the one piloting Bossarago. So, 
It's going to be big damage, though. Yeah, ultimate clothesline here from Gaba. Uh, next interaction could potentially kill here. And the Raging Strike is not going to do it. No, it's not, because he didn't have the, the, the follow-up for Raging Chain. Okay, hold on. It's a scary position for Gaba, and that is going to be not a reset, because he didn't have Raging Strike. Goddamn. It's a scary situation for both players now. He's on reset points, but Gaba, if he wins this, he'll put himself on tournament points. So nobody wants to get hit here and run up. Ultimate headbutt. Absolutely no fear from Gaba. And now, this this match is for all the marbles. Fusel has to stay alive and reset the bracket. Or if Gaba wins this, he wins the entire tournament and sends Fuselet home without his revenge. Let's see what he can do. Back throw incident starting off here for Fuselet. Not a great start to this round. Not how he wanted to go. Gets his brave counter spot dodged into a command grab right here from Gaba Ghoul. Looking, looking like very much Gobble Ghoul favorite so far, but you can never know. Fuselet has turned rounds around very quickly when he's gotten a chance. For example, that whiffed clothesline. This could really be his chance to turn it all around here. Good damage gets himself out of the corner. Good screen position now for Fuselet as he makes his way to mid-screen. Once again, takes Gobble's legs out from under him and command grabs him. This is bad. This is bad if your name's Gobble Ghoul. You gotta be very careful about this, but the raw ultimate clothesline gotta land. It's gonna be a lot of damage that Fuselet has to eat here. And now, one potential interaction. This is it. 50-50, striker throw, what are you gonna do, Fuselet? Looks like he's not jumping, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be Gabagool in the most Ladiva fashion possible. Unfortunately, an unbelievable comeback there from Fuselet almost, but this exemplifies the character more than anything else. At the end of the day, it's a 50-50, and when it mattered most, Gabba guessed right, Fuselet was not able to pull through. Incredibly, can we just talk for a second? Obviously, Gabagool, we're gonna get him on stage here. He's gonna be able to talk a little bit and then, uh, you know, speak on his victory. But just real quickly, Fuselet, what an absolute machine that man is, huh? Just again, dropping dropping down to the side from Gabagool early on and then just absolutely leaving a warpath of dead bodies behind him in loser's side and almost reset the bracket on Gabagool there. Very close set, that absolutely could have gone either way at any point, almost with the reverse 3 0. So, incredibly strong play from Fuselet there. Well played to him. But that is going to be Gabagool as your champion for the second ever open bracket wall brawl tournament here. So, uh, there you go. We got we got Gabagool hey. on the mic here. What's up, dog? How's it going? Hey, hey, it's going good. It's going good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad I pulled it in through the end. Um, Fuselet's such a good player, though. First of all, man, yeah, Fuselet's guy, a monster, goat. man. He's terrifying. Since Vanilla Man, I've been watching him every time I run into him ranked. He's it's all it's always so much fun to fight and he's always down to give advice too which is what i love um but uh yeah i mean i had a good fun playing this tournament i'm glad i i'm glad i entered today i was like i don't know maybe should i should i not no, no, it's I'm a glad, good I'm glad uh, good way to close out the patch and stuff um right yeah like next a, one will be after it'll be on the new patch we'll see what happens then vane will be out yeah too. yeah we'll see vane i don't know uh but yeah i mean i had such a good time everyone here is man it, these brackets are so good they're so much fun I always, uh, when I watch, I can, and uh, I'm glad I got to got to play. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's sick. Nah, I'm glad uh, you had a good GG's time, to, brother. GG's to everyone who I fought. Um, yeah, I mean, Ladiva's a lot of fun. I got to talk on the GOAT character, Ladiva. Despite okay. fighting for Vayne, I'm not never going to drop the character. Abandoning but... Ladiva for Vayne. Also, get back in here. We got to do our Thug Finals. I got I to gotta get my ass clapped real quick. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, bro. It's, that's that's how it works. Winner winner gets oh. to uh, Thug oh, Finals with Ladiva. So let's let's okay. get in here. Ladiva Mirror. Sorry. Okay, I gotta restart that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he closed the game. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I'll be asked, you know, yeah. speak, speak your truth while you're while you're getting in here, while you're whatever you nah, want. Nah, yeah, no. Nah. I mean it's fun. Ladiva's great, like um she's a very volatile character. A lot of people I see a lot of tier lists that put her like bottom three or whatever, which I can like understand why. Yeah, like ours. It's we like put her bottom instinct, five. <laughs> the instinct is to put the grappler in the last tier, but Ladiva, especially compared to Vanilla, legitimately has so much going for her. And she's um She's uh she's just a ton of fun to play and if you use her tools right and um, I mean I I messed up a bunch of times I spammed that to you and stuff but like if you I think that I did I spammed it to you mostly because I was like I just want to get out of here yeah but yeah. um I think like a lot of a lot of the diva players tend to like just reflectively hit that button when they want to and it works a lot because it's a uh, it's a pretty damn good button but i think um i think like taking the patience and like taking a step back looking at the game and like asking yourself what your actions are showing to the uh to the opponent big thing yeah i mean i don't have i don't have too much to say just um everyone uh, everyone played so well and um honestly yeah. everyone has good days bad days i got uh, i put i got pretty lucky today too 
Yeah, how, how are you feeling when, uh, also, yes, Fuse, this is all recorded. So you can, everything in top eight at the very least was. So uh, a lot of your sets were recorded and, and your entire grands with uh, Gabba definitely was too. But yeah, how did you feel about, uh, it was getting a little scary there. People were talking about a yeah, commentator's curse no, to you, you know? I knew, I knew, um, I was, uh, it was nervous. It's just, I have like a tendency to, especially in grand finals, um, like uh, at my locals and stuff where I'll get to this like last point and then I'll play the first three sets of the uh, like reset, like, ah, whatever, I don't care. Like I have six games to win. Yeah. And then I'll lose, I'll get reset and I'll lock in. And by then it's too late. Like I've been red and I get too nervous. And yeah, stuff. you give up your big advantage so, too, right? From, from winner's side. Grants. Yeah. Yeah, no, having that was uh, having that was really nice. A lot of tricky matchups to fight today too. Keg, yeah. boss, I think it's it's fine, but also like it's just one that you don't get too much practice with. Especially not Fuselet level boss. Right? I mean, is there oh, even man. is there another one? <laughs> like Fuselet is uh, is so good. Yeah. Um, I can't uh, I can't think of every single boss, but. At the very least, yeah. The point is, Boss Rock is already pretty underrepresented, and then at, at this high yeah. level, it's super rare. Mm -hmm. right? so. Oh, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Dude, that, a that... lot of other Ludiva players, like, uh, shout out to Klo and Uber Cheesecake and Uber Cheesecake, uh, our everyone father. else. Yeah, everyone else out there. All those Ludivas, whenever I ask them for questions, they're always there to help. And I think um, I think that's a really nice part about uh, Ludiva is that uh, even me, like, anyone, if you ask anyone for help or questions or tips on the matchup, like there will always be someone who will answer your questions, and I thought like low tier unity is always absolutely is always so uh it's so nice so nice the grappler bonds can't be can't be shaken. Well, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you straight up you're gonna be teaching me this matchup right now because I I'm I, ain't no if ands or buts oh, about it. Gabba's Gabba's a much oh, better Ladiva than I am, so let's see. This, I uh, uh I'm really bad at the, the mirror, and I'm already got too. the <laughs> final nerd. Uh, we'll we'll see we'll, we'll play it let's, out. Okay, so here's uh, uh, just so just so you're aware. So we're gonna do this bug final. It'll be it'll be best of five, and then you get a uh, a special bragging rights roll there. You can pick a color for it later, oh, but also. Oh. If you're unfamiliar, you get to suggest a video that I have to start working All on right. within reason. If, you, have, if to, you have something ready, think about it. Okay, yeah, I'll have fine. to think about it. I don't have anything off the top of my head that's right now. That's totally okay. You can suggest I'll, uh, it, uh, I'll, DM to me later. I'll uh, think of something. Yeah, for sure. All, All right. right. What, what the hell here? are we doing here, man? What Ooh, the hell are we doing? Born here? to strike, forced to throw. <laughs> Honestly, born to throw, forced to strike, man. Wait, you took my yeah. color? That's not oh, fair. Oh, yeah, I use this color, Bro, that's too. not fair. Dude, that uh, that counter hit 5H into the, uh, what's it called? You did counter hit 5H, and you got far H. You tried to do a second uh, five, uh, close H there. That oh, was yeah, that stuff. happens so much. You have to be ready to go straight into uh, headbutts. Yeah. It oh, what? Oh, okay. what? Off the bat. I've never seen command grab tech itself. Oh, you haven't? No. Yeah, no, no. If two command grabs hit on the same frame. What the? They, uh... That is so cool. Wow, I'm, so I'm shocked you haven't seen that before. No, no. I yeah, really, no, it, it, I really happens. Happens. it happens. What in God's? That's awesome. That is so funny. Bonk, bonk. Get down here. Right. Again. Oh no. Ah, yeah, of course. Of course. Classic. Of course. How could I how could I be so naive? Oh my oh, what oh the hell? I don't I SPD was on cooldown. SPD was oh, on cooldown. I see, I see. I was like, oh god, I got baited. Yeah, but when then I, I get just the air grab, right? It puts it on cooldown, so. Add the read, but uh, wait, it's the I same cool. Just... You know what? I just learned so I, I I never thought about the fact that it's the same cooldown. Yeah, yeah. Especially oh, when you use shit. Ulti, yeah. will, uh, I've made that mistake a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I just didn't know. Oh god. Double headbutt, Ooh. unfortunately. I tried to jump. I get a little Oh, nice jump. Thank you. It's because uh, I tried to jump once and it didn't work, so I wanted to do it again to prove to myself that it could work, you know? Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's how it goes. Oh my god! Uh, Abare. The... Apparently. Ah! Get no. down from there. I, I had to jump less. I had to jump a lot less, I think. I'm scared, okay? I don't want to be up here. I don't want to be I don't want to be in your face. Bonk. Oh. oh! Oh, right. Of course. This one. Get away from me. No oh, Abare. I guess I'll do this. I don't know. I, just, I, want, yeah. I want my Brave points back, man. I want my Brave points back. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared. I, 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 if I can't Brave counter you, what am I supposed to do? Okay, yeah, but that's fair. Oh, God. Whew. Not like this. You don't uh, You do not do technical SPD like ever, huh? I've noticed. Oh. Why is that? Uh, yeah, I mean... Honestly, one day right there. Look, more like... damage. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the faster one, five frames. But if I think you're gonna do SPD on like that's me, fair. if I do that one, it's come to what a god. Yeah, no, I, I like to do it um, when it's like buffered and stuff. Uh, but the faster input damage nerf is pretty negligible. Or, like light SPD already does like no damage anyways. Yeah, but it could do slightly just, more no damage. It does say. slightly more. When I do EX SPD or when I do ultimate SPD, ninety percent of the time I'll do the uh, I'll do the proper input. Um, but for something like light SPD, the advantage is like. You know, you you do a command grab and it makes them think oh. like what you could do after. Yeah. Oh. 
I mean, also, I guess in oh, oh, in some cases it is nice. just better, right? Because you can't uh, you can't drop it, right? It's super easy. Sometimes yeah, I, I know yeah, I, I exactly. accidentally jump a lot of the time, oh, so I'm trying to get, input my 360s. Uh, okay. Drop. No. Oh no. Man, that's a classic. Oh, I'm no. Dead. That's oh, you're dead. Let's go. My, I think this is like, to be honest, I think this is my first win in the in the Diva Mirror in like a month. <laughs> Every oh, time man. I fight it, I fought nothing in current uh, tournament a couple of times. He's blown me up. Oh yeah, nothing. Uh, nothing's out there. He's, uh, he's, he's <laughs> his name is Average Grappler, and I find it insulting because what does that make me? Ow, 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 ow. Yeah. You ready? Oh, okay. You're actually spaced out. Oh, is oh, that shit. the? Uh... Yeah, that was absolutely that was that was the misinputs that I was uh, referring to earlier. Oh, gotta walk back. You're oh. doing you're doing good walkbacks. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Luckily, Ladiva is only oh, no, one of the no, no, no cool down. Ladiva is one of the only characters where you don't actually need the guard button because she ain't got no left right. So I can just walk, I can just hold back and do the get, get some distance yeah. when I need it. Oh my god, that clipped me! I did not realize I was in range of that. Two oh, M. Oh my god, what a god button! It is, it is real. Oh, good. you're still alive here. Damn right. <laughs> I, was I was so scared. I was definitely waiting for the super. I was, I, I, was, a, I, was I, a total I was, gamble. I was so scared. I like, yeah, I was definitely, I was thinking about it, like, now he's gonna jump, but then once you jump too, I was like, I don't know, man, what do I do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do I do? There was, a, I should have jumped, really what I should have done was jumped, like, a little bit back. Ow. Whoa! 6 6 the madman. What if I did this? What if I did this? Oh, God. <laughs> I just, that, just, that just works out, huh? I thought the, I six, six, would, uh... 6 6 is a very weird button. It's a button. I, there's, there's usually, like, not really a game plan you have with it. What's nice is that if you do um like MSPD, the knockdown and like how plus you are is just uh just big enough to get the six six H and if they jump it like hits them towards the wall and you get a wall bounce. Oh, that meant I didn't have that bus, I got overhead. Ball. What? I got it, yeah. Did I not uh maybe maybe I thought I thought oh god oh, that six why why would you why would you why did you use that move too? I feel like that move is oh god, that move is big uh, I'm dead by the way. That's hell. Yeah, you did good. Oh, I, yeah. You did the technical one too, I saw that. Uh, why do you, why do you, why do you do 623U so much? I feel like that move is, is pure ass. Um, well, 623U is the fastest of the air grabs. Uh, it's also just, um, just kind of easy to do. The, the knockdown you get, and if you do it raw, like the 20, oh, the <laughs> 25 meter refund is, um, is nice. Like, you build meters so fast in this game. Yeah, and the right. forced hard knockdown in the mid screen is really important because, Oops, what? Gotta do the classic stride player back throw. Yeah, if yeah. they do, um. Oh. You gotta get Hit you with something there before you go. Oh, got a raging strike. I'm so free. Yeah. I'm so free to. Oh, uh, no ooh, conversion. Oh, never, never mind, never mind. Never mind. Uh, anyway. uh, it works out in the end. Am I dead? Oh, you're not dead. No. Um, I, I was gonna you. say, um. Oh! oh. I was supposed to be no. I was supposed to be super skybound dart. No. Honestly, honestly, if I if I jumped and you caught me, that would have been sick. Because <laughs> I was thinking of jumping because he had SSP. Yeah, but that, uh, but that, no, six two three you. The other air grabs. The this is a thing that they changed. In, uh, they changed in, Wait, in no, from Rising to Vanilla. Yeah. Is that um, the other air grabs? They don't. Ooh, they don't give. Um, Ow. They, Ow. They, they don't give a uh, hard knockdown like force hard knockdown. Oh god, I got reset. This is so much damage. Yeah. The oh, six six L didn't actually uh, combo. Ow. 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 Oh, Tensu. Oh. Perhaps. Oh, bonk. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Just get grabbed, dog. I don't yeah, know what yeah. I'm doing. Just give me, give me, give me the, give me the break yeah, points no. out of here. In mid screen, uh, the ult air grab is, is good because it for you actually get OT off it. The other air grabs mid screen, they uh, they just basically just send you flying. Really? They, 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 yeah, yeah. They because knock, because, because it's like they tech, back to they, them basically. Well, kind of, but the thing is, they can they can tech afterwards, right? It's like uh, Ow. it's not a hard knockdown. So they can oh. like back roll, like in uh, a bit like in Street Fighter. Oh, oh damn! Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, you can't get anything off of the off of six six L actually landing unless it's a counter hit, I think, right? Oh uh, yeah, no, they gotta be crouching or a counter hit. You can do like you can go into bar L and then raging strike if you really need to kill. That's a pretty hard confirm. I don't even do it that much. Oh no! Oh no! Counter! Oh wait! Oh, another I gotta reset. reset again. No, I need to be holding back here. I'm just like he's not gonna drop this combo, but then he keeps dropping the combo. Oh god! Yeah. Fair oh. My face. Ow. One of these. <laughs> Down. Man. Well, that was uh, that was around. Oh, I'm alive. Wait. Oh, what? The timing. Oh. The timing. Uh, I guess I'll do. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I'll do it anyway. Oh, get down here. Oh no. <laughs> I saw my death approaching in slow motion there. Yeah. <laughs> Not like this. Just see myself committing to the startup of 6-6-H there, and uh, everything goes horribly wrong. 
Okay, fair enough. Bit of an ambitious button there. Oh, got crushed. My face. Owie, I need that. So, what ooh, the hell do you think you are? Hit me with the content Sorry, the button. Con the content button, yeah. The absolute disrespect. Monk. Oh god, that was supposed oh, to be SPD. I got close, close line instead. Oh, I, I get I get that sometimes too. Yeah. Another reason to do the simple ones, I guess, sometimes. Overhead, sir. Sure. Oh, good block back. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing I know to do in this matchup. But I'm like, hey, that, that's probably a good idea. Get away from me. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Wait, wait for the side switch there. I, I respect. It. What if I did this? Uh oh, it works every that's, time. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. Uh, you're alive. I, I don't do the technical input. For yeah, this yeah. One. You know what? If I had done the technical, no, input, you, you, I, I don't think so. No. God, this is no, a man, a man can drink. What the? <laughs> what the? <laughs> the roll. What the <laughs> god? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm dead as up. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Roll into SSBA. That has got to be some of the, the, the weirdest shit I've ever seen. I guess what you know because it's uh, yeah. Slack? That was a well. Oh, that's that's three. Well, Slack. That, that, you know what? What a way! What a way to end the Oliva Mirror there. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I took a game. I'll I'll, uh, I'll, take, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that for sure. All right, man. Um, Oliva Mirror know? is always a little spooky. Like I never I never like hedge on a. If I see another one in the, my bracket path, I always know it could go anyway. It's yeah, uh, it's fair. a scary one for sure. Yeah, because I think it's it's, it's funny. And it's not just like. Oh, you know, it's a mirror, so it's just, you know, it's weird and yeah, you're playing your own character. But I think also Ladiva's offense is like really good against Ladiva. Like Ladiva yeah. does not have the tools to deal with Ladiva. Oh, yeah. Pretty, I mean, Ladiva, when she's in, like, it's an S tier character. That offense is terrifying. Damn. And uh, right. Light SPD be having so much range is also bananas. Damn right. Wait, what do you mean? This is me, someone to 3 0 brick next week? Bro, dog, I'm getting my ass beat in these in these tug finals. Is that not enough for you, Lazy? He oh, wants to man. see me burn, man. They, uh, they're just never happy, are they? That's what I'm saying. Everyone wants, everyone wants to see the content creator suffer, I suppose. Uh, in any case. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much uh, for the no set problem. there and the, the advice, Gabba. And well done, once again, on taking that, uh, well, basically, the, the whole you. tournament there. Uh, yeah, it, when, you, when you got an idea for a video, please, by all means, uh, DM it to me. I will let you know, for sure. It'll be me. something Ladiva related, for for sure. I got to think good. of a devious challenge or situation to put you in. Uh, you know, the person who won yesterday, Archer, they made me play 40 minutes of Avatar of Lyle, so I'll take anything that you That's have over crazy. that. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, wait, right. wait, how about this? Oh, yeah. So I, I'm doing a... I've been playing Ladiva lately, and I've been doing nothing but strike. Only strike, no throw. I don't do a single <laughs> command grab. So if you want, you could do like a ranked session. No, no strike. You're allowed to do. I, I let people like. I think six two three U is fine because it's an anti air grab. Sure. Or or six two three X. And then it's like in um, the strike throw mix, you could never pick throw. Is what yeah, you're saying. yeah. And then you can do normal throw to tech throws, obviously, if you accidentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. And I think air regular air throw, like jumping like regular grab, that's probably okay too. SS mm. no SBA no SSBA. Your mix cannot oh. be like throw related okay, but at all. Okay, the projectile invincible one though. I can do that one, right? Yeah, yeah, that one's okay. Of oh, course, okay, of course. God damn. Okay. And you can combo into the supers, right? Like if you want to end a suit combo with a with like a technical command grab super like SSBA is, okay. that's okay too. But everything else only strikes. I, I it's a fun like thing to do. It's a little like exercise. Sure. Yeah, I mean that's basically how I played Ladiva before I got to like I think an S plus. That was basically how I just never did command grab because I was like this moves. Nah, I mean. It's uh, it's something you got to find the balance of. Like late, like early when I started playing, I was doing only throws, and then mm -hmm. I leaned a lot more heavily into strikes. And then now, like uh, I was at a tournament this weekend, last weekend in New York, and yeah, I yeah. was talking with Uber, and he was like, "Gabba, like you, you, you had so many moments to just throw in your pressure. Why didn't you do?" And I was like, "I actually forgot. I <laughs> sometimes you just get into. You got to remember the two things. But honestly, remembering strike and throw, that's uh, not a hard challenge. I'll uh, I'll take that any day of the week. Indeed, yeah." All right, awesome. Oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, you get you get your special bragging rights roll. What color do you want it to be? I'd like it to be red, please. Red is my but uh, I'm the red. color of yeah, choice. Okay. That's fair. We can we can both be red. That's you, you took my color in uh, the game. You're gonna take my color uh, in the sorry, server now too. Sorry. That's, that's okay. That's listen. We'll, you, we'll see when the when the alternate Ladiva costume comes out. I'm sure we'll we'll have different colors for that one. Hopefully so. All right. All right, Gabba. Well, uh, any any last words for your adoring fans before you head out here and I go record the outro oh. for this video? Keep playing this game. Grand Blue is a wonderful thing. Don't listen to all the all that noise about Brave Counter, this, whatever. Just have fun. Play with your homies. You know, step by step, right? Bit by bit. Everyone everyone can uh, can get there. Find, play the character you love. 
Don't don't uh, don't be like I gotta switch to this. I gotta switch to that. Unless you're making money off this game, uh, then maybe you know <laughs> if you want to compete, pick the best character. But uh, if you're having fun, you know, just do what do what, do what uh do what makes. It. I've been playing Grapplers for three years, getting owned by zoners every single day. <laughs> but sometimes you just just do what makes makes you happy. Absolutely spitting as always. All right, and that is going to be a tournament. Really cool to see uh, some some very strong players coming out here. It's unfortunate, Lazy, uh, with the new time slot we're doing the tournament in, Lazy can't quite join, but so he couldn't defend his title, uh, his crown. But still, it's good to see some very strong players. Fuselet, Gaba, Council, right? Lots of people showing up, uh, really taking some names here. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys had a good time. And of course, as always, if you made it this far in the video, I got four things for you. You know how it is from number one. Uh, join the Discord server. That's where all these tournaments are, are taking place, right? There's a link in there for, in the description, right? We have a intermediate tournament, sort of, uh, from for like D to S rank players, but it ends up being mostly sort of S fives, uh, things like that, A ones, right? So that's that's kind of uh, going on on Wednesday at 5 p.m. EST, and then of course this open bracket here is Thursdays at 6 p.m. EST. So uh, if you want to join either one of those, or otherwise just have a nice community to hang out with, talk about fighting games, talk about relink, talk about gotcha games, talk about music, talk about art. There's a channel for like everything. Everyone just hangs out and has a good time here. So I implore, you, I implore you to join if any of that sounds good to you, but I also implore you to please keep it the nice and welcoming place that it currently is. Uh, as you can see, everyone's really chill. I don't really have to do any, any kind of moderation or anything like that, but I will not hesitate to do some modding and ban somebody's ass if I have to. So just don't let that be you. Don't be the first person I ever have to ban, okay? I don't want that reputation. Of course, number two, if you liked the video, I'm not sure if you did. Uh, and if you did, if you made it this far, I know you did. So get down there and like the damn video, please. It'll uh, cost you nothing. Greatly to the channel. I appreciate it a lot, of course, and it's free. Uh, while you're there, for, for number three, that subscribe button, that bell button, they are right over there. Keep you up to date with all of this content we're throwing at you. I mean, on days like this, where we're putting out these tournament VODs, it's something like five hours of content a day between the, the noon time slot, this 4 p.m. time slot, and the relink time slot at 7, right? So, unless you have five hours of your day to dedicate to me, a little old me, twice a week here, I would recommend, if you do, I appreciate that, but it's kind of weird. Uh, I, if you do, though, if you don't, though, I would recommend you hit those two buttons, stay up to date when something new is uploaded every every day, and uh, maybe go back and watch it when you've got a minute. And, of course, number four, most importantly, more important than ever, buttons to smash or whatever YouTube-friendly interactions you hit me with. I appreciate those, but I've had a great time hanging out today, most of all. I know I sure did, and it's always fun to have these tournaments, right? It's always great to see uh, players coming out and challenging themselves, and of course, having some of these top players also around to show people kind of how it's done and give some give some tips now and then on the matches and, and all that. It's a great time. So, having a lot of fun with Grambler. There's going to be a lot more coming your way, but until then, I will see you in the next one. Peace!